Welcome to Guys We Fucked. <laughs> guys We Fucked. Guys We Fucked. <laughs> I'm Christina. I'm Corinne. We're sorry, sorry about, about last, last night. night. The anti slut shaming podcast. <laughs> I never stop. <laughs> Hey fuckers, welcome to another episode of Guys We Fuck. It's the anti slut shaming podcast. I'm Corinne. I'm Christina. How the mm. fuck you doing? I'm so good. How are you? Doing? I have so much makeup on. I got yeah. We're sitting here in uh so an hour's worth of hair and makeup. Yeah. So Corinne and I got a photo shoot today. Shout out to Eric Corneman and Glennis. Glenna Franklin. Glenna. Fuck. I've been calling her Glennis. <laughs> have you really, Glennis? Yeah. There's a comedian named Glennis. But yeah, oh, no, yeah, Glenna. there is. Whoopsies. Glenna she, Franklin. Glenna Franklin She's is all amazing makeup artist. Um, and then we came back to my apartment to record this here intro. Hello. And, and we ordered blockheads, mm-hmm. burritos, yep. all kinds of shout outs right now. <laughs> and then I was outside with my giant amount of makeup on. Uh, and the guy, the delivery guy came up and I was like, oh, you are you apartment, whatever, whatever, my apartment? He goes, oh, yeah, are you Corinne Fisher? And I was like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> and he goes, wow, you look beautiful. And I was like, oh, God, this is not, this is, because this is too much makeup for, like, a real life well, interaction. I mean, I like a lot of makeup, but it's, I, I mean. Yours there, looks less There's just horrifying. so, there's just certain people that you don't want to have that kind of sexual encounter with. And the person delivering your blockheads burritos is one of Definitely those people. Exactly. One your of those Uber people. driver, your yeah. Lyft driver. Well, you know, he was a nice guy. He was a nice young fella. Yeah. Chaining up his bike. And I was like, let me save you some time, buddy. I think you're going to my apartment. And then he thinks I'm you. And then he's telling me how great my makeup looks. And that I look like a dancer. And I was like, you mean stripper. And I was like, okay. Oh, uh-huh. is that because I was like, you know, you know, ballet dancers with their excessive makeup. <laughs> yeah, those whores always cake it on. It's so annoying. And I was like, all right, that was a stripper couple. That that's fine. I don't care. And uh, and then as I was walking in, and my butt was towards him, he goes, shake that ass. And I was like, no, no, no. I hate you. Can mm. you just leave. Yeah, you I ruined mean- it, sir. You ruined it. You were very polite. And then you fucked it up. It's so bad. But sometimes I just walk around New York and I just like whisper to myself, God, I hate men. (laughs) I do it a lot. (laughs) And I don't. And when I say it, it I don't mean literally all men, but I mean almost all men. Only the men who are shitheads like that. I mean a good, I I, I gotta be honest, I mean a good amount of men. None of the men (laughs) that I know that I am friends with would do any of that Well, yeah, no, no, no. None none of the people who exist in what I call the inner circle. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, no, just a lot of times I'm just looking around, looking at them. Some guy stopped me on the street yesterday before our show and he was like, I see that you have a bag that says voodoo on it. I'm like, yeah. Oh my God. I went to New Orleans and I got a little carried away. (laughs) Um, I also have a voodoo doll. You want to see it? He's Give me your hair. He was like my my uh he's like my friend and this guy was like uh 55 and he was like good for him but like it showed it um but i could tell he was like <laughs> he was like hot and dtf like back in the day and like honestly for an older guy like not i know, love hot older guys yeah he wasn't even like but he was like smoking a cigarette a little dirty like just my type but yeah but he was like See, i have an extra ticket my friend's playing at uh rockwood music hall and he's like do you want to come and i was like what and then i was and i was like very dolled up i was like no i actually have my own show and then no one ever thinks i'm a comedian because i don't i'm not eighty thousand pounds overweight with a gimp leg um, i don't know any comedians that are like that that's what people oh that's everyone's perception yeah that's though. what people think comedians look like like i have a fucking peg leg and a parrot on my <laughs> and a shoulder i've uh, dentures falling out of my mouth a banana i and, don't know and a bag of puppets i'm, yeah, I'm just not sure what people <laughs> think a comedian looks like i guess funnier uh, I guess my face isn't that funny. So, um, and he, and then he was Did like, Did you oh, say yes? What do you do, music? And I was like, No, no, I actually am. I'm a, a comedian. Oh, I always tell people. Open the floodgates, though. I tell people just because when people say, What are you a sing? It annoys me that they always think um, it, it, it's like something like quote unquote girly. Man, they always think I'm a stripper. They always think, No, they when I say I'm a was, performer. Oh. They think that means like twice on the streets. A guy thought that meant stripper. And then this fucking burrito guy. Oh, people always think I mean like mu- musician. Wow. I guess he got a musician's face. I guess. Well, people ask me if I smoke face. a lot. So I think I do have some kind of like a rock and roll maybe look. Oh, yeah. I think that's what it is. Yeah. You know, like a young Joan Jack. Remember in New Orleans when we wanted to go <laughs> to McDonald's? In New Orleans? <laughs> Last week, yeah. We wanted to go to McDonald's. Mm-hmm. And then only the drive through was open 24 hours. So we walked to Burger King because Google Maps said it was 24 hours. Right. But then we got there and it was only the drive through 
And we walked up and I stomped my feet a couple times just to get the attention, not to, you know, have a tantrum. Well, because we thought that would set off the sensor of the car because we're like, you know, surely Christina Hutchinson weighs as much as an SUV. <laughs> yeah, I got this, Corinne. Don't even worry about <laughs> like, it. No, go I'll sit, handle this. Go sit, go sit on that parking block. Uh, and, then, and then we went back to the McDonald's. That didn't work. And then we ordered an Uber and we're like, can you go through the drive through <laughs> I believe you ordered a Lyft. <laughs> oh, you're right. We did order a Lyft. I've been super conscious of it and only using Lyft. Good. You get rides and shit. Well, it's also, they also, we had a long, I had a long conversation with one of the drivers and they're like, oh, they actually do treat their drivers better. Oh, they do. And they're like, and it's cheaper. And I was like, you had me at cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> I was cool, like, cool, cool. Equal working conditions yeah. or whatever, whatever. Less money for me. <laughs> I'm in. Oh my God. But oh. yeah, no, it's been a fun week. I came home, uh, me and, you know, I was giving James, you know, a, a thank God I'm home blow job. And <laughs> how happy are you that I'm here right now? Here yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome times two uh, <laughs> blow job. And then he was, he was just like, let's 69. And I was like, Oh, that is the most annoying position. Exactly. So annoying and pointless. I was like, I fucking, and he knows I hate 69. And I was like, mm. why does he like it? And I was like, mm, I'm just really concentrating on this right now. <laughs> I was like, I don't, I was like, you know, it's just like, I'm really concentrating on my work right now. And like, also it's like, what, what angel of a girlfriend has ever said, let me concentrate on this blow job. Yeah. I deserve a fucking purple heart for saying that. I mean, I say that too, but it's cause I don't want to <laughs> 69. Yeah. And then he, and then, and then, so I'm already like, oh, please stop asking about 69. And then he goes, well, I just don't want to go without 69 for the duration of this relationship. Well, that went from zero then to hundred. <laughs> then I dropped the mic and took a lap around the room and I was like, <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I was like, I don't even know where there were so many things wrong with what you just said. I was like, Poor James doesn't want to go out with 69. You're going to no wear forever with no 69. No, poor baby. <laughs> so, I mean, all, I mean, everything he texts me this week, I just go, I don't know. Why don't you go find someone to 69 with? I mean, just everything gets that reply. I can't not reply with that. One of the things that I don't like about 69, one of the many things, one is I can't fucking concentrate. If I'm sucking your dick and you're eating me out, I'm going to bite your dick off. Not on purpose. And I need that dick. So... I'm just trying to preserve for you and me. Sometimes during 69, honestly, I'll like, I'll get so into my pussy beauty in that I'll just lately lay my head well, on his pelvis. That's what I was going <laughs> <laughs> Time for a nap. Oh, no, a lot of times I just end up my, the dick is like either next to my mouth or in it, but nothing's happening. Yeah. I'm just drooling. Yeah. You're like, mm, this is good. And then I'm always so scared I'm going to fart. <laughs> Cause man, that butthole is close. It is close. I'm not worried I mean, about the in his farting. Nose. Yeah, no, I don't mind about that. Cause well, cause I, the position you're in, it's like a, like a tabletop yoga position. Right. I'm used That's to a people, farty position. People, I'm, I'm, my butt is ready. Cause people always want to be in my butt. So I get it. But then tough, tough life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, there's, you know, I'm sure you're, you're busy getting motorboated all the time. <laughs> Um, and, it's true. And the, and yeah. And I don't know, but I feel like the 69 is more enjoyable for a man because you're laying, he's laying, gets the laying down position and yeah. then just has to occasionally like go like, like lick a little. Uh, like oh a yeah. Little, I just lay here and stick my little. tongue out. Yeah. It just, it's less work. And isn't it as the butthole really is like right at your eye level. You're it, it is, but I mean, it's, it's not the hole because the cheeks are still on top of it unless you're spreading the cheeks. Then the butthole's well, not cause there. Well, because you got to spread the legs to get on either side of his head. Yeah. So yeah, that's a pretty spread out... Yeah, I, I mean, don't... I've never seen myself from that view. Yeah, I was like, I, I feel would like I'm could... interested in it. Yeah, I was like, I feel like the, my cheeks have enough fat on them that they're still hiding the actual hole. Actually, Steven told me recently that he rarely sees my butthole because my butt cheeks are so big. And I was like, thank you so much. Yeah, I was like, I, was like, I think it would cover it. Yeah, so. I guess so. Yeah. Ugh, 69. Yeah. You guys. I don't get it. I don't get it either. I don't like it. I don't know. It's, it's like, a, I never got it, but I was like, what? I guess this is a, a acrobatic trick I should do. No, 69 is like a combination shampoo conditioner. It's like, it's oh, just it never not works. working as good. The convenience is not worth They're it. They're two separate things for a reason. Yep. You got to lather and then you got to lather with the conditioner. Yeah. God, that is a great metaphor yeah, because it, it's just shampoo, conditioner, it's just combos. laziness. <laughs> Never worked for me. Never worked. You guys, if you want more episodes of Guys We Fucked in Your Life, if you've binged all of them and you're like, Wah. um, like James about 69, well, <laughs> you're in luck. Because... I'm going to hear about this. <laughs> no, it's all right. Uh, Steven did the same thing. 
You can get them at howl.fm slash GWF. That is the exact URL that you have to type in for us to like get credit for that. So if you want to help out the podcast and you want more episodes, they're really fun. Karen and I read emails and interview guests and uh, get to have a more in-depth conversation about these therapy. topics. therapy. It's great. Really fun. Also, if you want to support the podcast in another way, you can buy our merchandise. It's all available now at sorryaboutlastnightcomedy.com. This supports the show. We got tank tops. We got hoodies. We got tote bags. It's really cool. We have some listener designs stuff by the wonderful Elise Perry. Um, check it out. We love wearing it. It's so fun. And Honestly, then, those shirts are like mad comfy. Oh yeah, they're really nice. I was kind of shocked. I was like, I put it on last night. I was like, Steven, this is like the softest shirt I've ever owned. He's very like, well, cute. that's good. Yeah, it's very nice. <laughs> uh, come see us live and wear those shirts uh, on Friday, October 28th at 11 15 p.m. I'll be doing the Halloween edition of Nacho Bitches at New York Comedy Club. That's $10 with code Nacho. I co host that with Blair Saki. Saturday, October 29th, Wendy Starling and I are co hosting the Halloween edition of Glamour Puss at Zinc Bar. 82 West 3rd Street in the West Village. We are going to be wearing Halloween costumes throughout the entire show. And my Halloween costume this year is probably my best one yet. So, and I don't really do Halloween that well. So (laughs) this is going to be good. So you can come in your Halloween costume if you want. Tickets are 15 bucks. Link for tickets is in the description of this podcast. Uh, And then we're hitting the road this November. On November 2nd, Syracuse, New York will be at the Funny Bone. Albany, New York, Uh, November 3rd, The Funny Bone. Uh, November 5th, we're back in New York City to do a live recording of Guys We Fucked at Caroline's on Broadway as part of the New York Comedy Festival. November 6th, we'll be in Hartford, Connecticut at The Funny Bone. November 9th, we'll be in Irvine, California at The Improv. That one's almost sold out, so definitely get your tickets for that. Uh, 1111, make a wish. We're going to be in Phoenix, Arizona at Stand Up Live. Uh, November 13th, in Ontario, California at The Improv. (laughs) November 16th, Indianapolis, Indiana, Crackers. Uh, uh, November 17th, Columbus, Ohio at the original Funny Bone. Oh, shit. I got the Chicago date. I got to say it. Um, oh, my mom oh, wait, sent me a on. phonetic way of no, fucking saying So many it. people tweeted it. Okay, I'm going to try. Don't get mad at me, you guys. November 18th, we're going to be in Chicago, Illinois at the Anatheum Theater and and. Fucking God Christ almighty. I think it's Anthonam. Anthonam? If you just say it the way it was spelled. Anth- it's- oh, it's Anthonam, I think. Someone sent me a YouTube oh, video. Anthonam. Specifically a pronouncing oh, it. Oh, that sounds like, perfect. Anth- the the Anthonam Theater. I yeah. was like, that was really helpful. And also, I've been fucking it up. Yeah. Anthonam would be if it was a Jewish theater. The Anthonam Theater. <laughs> Get your lot, because it comes down. <laughs> so the Anthonam Theater. Anthonam theater. Uh, that one's almost sold out as well. So get your tickets. And then on November 20th, we're closing out this leg of the tour in Cleveland, Ohio at Hilarities. We also have Facebook invites for all of those shows uh, on our Facebook page so you can invite your friends it's always great so many times people invite one person that doesn't know what the hell guys we fucked is and they have the best time of their they lives they have the best time it's a super nice surprise and we really appreciate it because then someone else listens to the podcast it's like i know you want to keep it as a secret to yourself but don't just tell one person don't. you really like don't be selfish just one person you like a lot 69 with this podcast <laughs> and invite a friend uh oh we're about to read ads and if that pisses you off you can fast forward Suck Thank, my clit. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> we love you. We have a new sponsor today. It is Away Luggage. Um, this luggage is dope. We got suitcases in the mail and we're like, what? What stalker is sending me luggage? <laughs> oh, it's a way. This luggage is made from durable, high quality materials at a much lower price because they've cut out the middleman. You can choose from three sizes, the carry on, the medium or the large for extended stays. The luggage comes with a built in TSA approved combination lock that's at the top of the bag to prevent theft and a removable washable laundry bag that keeps dirty clothes separate from clean clothes. It's really cool. It is really cool. 
Also, the carry-on is able to charge all cell phones, tablets, e-readers, and anything else that's powered by a USB cord. A single charge of the Away carry-on will charge your iPhone five times so you never have to worry about a dead cell phone while traveling. That's so fucking cool. Christine and I saw this. I was like, And we're like, Yo. yes, because half of our time in airports is spent like sitting next to a wall. <laughs> I know. And all the bitches got the plugs. Yes. And bitches is men and women in this case. Everyone hot in the plugs. Yes. Uh, so this is a, such an awesome suitcase. What, what a great idea. Uh, there's a lifetime warranty on this suitcase. If anything breaks, they replace it for <laughs> your entire life. You can just throw you it out a window. Be on death's door <laughs> and be like, hey, excuse me. Uh, I'll replace it. So for $20 off your order, visit awaytravel.com slash GWF and use promo code GWF during checkout. That's awaytravel.com slash GWF with promo code GWF away. That's where you're going. <laughs> Go on. Thank you. You inspired me. You inspired me. Do you know what inspires me? What? Blue Apron. Wow. <laughs> Blue Apron knows that when you cook with incredible ingredients, you make incredible meals. And you know who else knows that? My parents. Mr. and Mrs. Hutchinson, because these motherfuckers are obsessed with Blue Apron and it saved their marriage and it bonds them together. And it's the cutest thing because I still get pictures every time they cook a meal. Mm. They get the plan that it's three meals a week for two people each. That's one of your options. And then there goes dad sending me texts of his food. (laughs) Uh, They set the highest quality standards for their community of suppliers, farms, fisheries and ranchers, whether it's crispy chicken Milanese or roasted pork steamed buns. <laughs> <laughs> pork buns. Uh, Blue Apron is bringing you the best uh, quality ingredients for less than $10 a meal. They deliver seasonal recipes along with pre portioned ingredients so you don't waste anything to make delicious home cooked meals. The recipes are customized by you. So if you don't eat certain things, that's all you got to do is put that. Um, and they're also based on your preferences of like what you like to eat and stuff. <clears throat> Another thing I learned is if you don't like the meal that you're scheduled to get on blueapron.com, you can change it, which I didn't know. Oh, you like, didn't know that? That's my yeah, favorite I had thing to do. No idea. And I was like, you mean I have a fucking choice? Yeah, yeah, it's great. That's amazing. Uh, each box includes easy to follow step by step recipe card. Very important. Uh, check out this week's menu and get your first three meals full free with free shipping. Uh, just go to blueapron.com slash GWF. That's blueapron.com slash GWF. Blue Apron. Get your pork bun out of my ass. <laughs> All right, guys. We're done with emails now. You can come out. We're done with ads. Everyone. We're oh, sorry. On well, I meant, yeah. That's still fun. I was like, mm. no, we're going on to come emails. Out, come out. <laughs> what isn't that like Dorothy? Glinda sings that in Wizard of Oz. Come, oh, the, yeah, 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 yeah. Come, Glinda come, sings Glinda. it. She sings, come out, come out, wherever you are to meet the young lady who fell from a star. She Whoa. fell from the star. She fell very high. Okay. Whoa. I, I am on. very impressed. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, I that like my brother and I both had an obsession with movies and that was his. So I've seen that movie like actually probably a hundred times at least. Oh, that's me with Matilda. Yeah. Woohoo. All right. So the first email is from a woman who wrote us named Shona and Shona needs all the people in the Philadelphia area. Uh, if you're interested basically in going out and helping Hillary Clinton in her well, I don't know what the word is that I'm going to say. Well, Pennsylvania is a very important state in this election. No, I was going to say, oh. I was going to make up like a weird in her word. her fight like, for presidency? In her fight. I was like, in her float to presidency? I don't know what, what in her word I wanted to use. In her ascension to presidency? But anyway, uh, if you're interested in helping, uh, go uh, talk to Shona. <laughs> We're going to buy. Bye. <laughs> that's it. Just, you, you know her. Tell Shona. If you're in the Philly area and you know Shona, that's it. Okay. Tell Sean you want to help Hillary. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. No, wait, she, she has a link. It's a vo- uh, volunteer registration. Like we're going to put it uh, in the description of this podcast and she needs help specifically in the suburbs of Philadelphia because Pennsylvania is a super important um, state in this election. This is only if you're pro Hillary, if you don't fucking like Hillary, don't volunteer and don't complain about it. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> um, I took time out of my day to tell you how much I hate. Oh my God. That's the one email I wanted to read, but it's fine. It's not worth it. The guy who emailed me saying he numbered, he's like, Christina, enough already. We get it. Corinne, keep doing you was the subject line. Oh. And it was just numbered things that he wanted me to change. Included the way I do accents and how I just sing all the time. And it really annoys him. 
fuck you. <laughs> Stop listening. I am not forcing you. Oh, and I was just like, thank God, because I get those emails. I know. 75 times a day. I know. A little, little criticism for Christina. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to read this next email. Why am I being put on a pedestal for forgiving my boyfriend who cheated on me? Hello, ladies. The compliments, compliments, compliments. Anyway, I hope my subject line caught your attention as I don't believe you guys have dipped your toes into this complicated subject. I've been binging on your podcast for a little over a month and I know you gals will bring great honesty and critical thinking to my question. Before we begin to answer my question, I'd like to give you some history. I'm a soon to be 23 year old gay man and my boyfriend is 24. I met my boyfriend almost three years ago. I can remember the first time I met him and our first date. We had traded numbers through an app and did the usual texting back and forth. Well, picture me 20 years old, super drunk at a pizza joint at 2 a.m. with friends. I got it in my head. (laughs) Well, guess who I texted? I asked him when we were going to meet and his response was, I thought you weren't interested anymore. Fast forward a week later and our first date is me getting my hips pierced as he watches. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Uh, the making out as I dropped him off was just so electric. I haven't had that feeling with anyone else. Seriously, thinking back to it gives me chills. Oh, We made our relationship official two weeks later. The first six months were amazing, but we broke up because he graduated and other justifiable reasons concerning his family and moved back to LA. It broke my heart. We found it hard to talk to one another because it was a quote, good breakup. Three months later, I wake up on my 21st birthday to a lengthy text of how much he wishes he could celebrate it with me with a cropped photo of Nicki Minaj kissing me. P.S. I love Nicki Minaj. Me too. Uh, Who doesn't? She's great. Uh, Needless to say I cried on my birthday I called him and we told each other how much we missed each other long story short I dropped my life and moved to LA to be with him six months later I find out he cheated on me I can't describe the feelings I had I guess a panic attack I ended up quitting my job giving a two-day notice and was gone before he got back from camping with his family He called me crying, asking me to come back and saying how sorry he was. We went six months without speaking and slowly started talking to now being back together. We've been doing long distance for now nine months and we both agreed I should move back down and try again. My question comes into play because a lot of close friends, family and coworkers always give me these lines. How do you do it? That's so mature of you. I could never forgive someone for cheating on me. How are you able to even have sex with him? It doesn't keep popping up. Why are people treating me as if I'm Gandhi or Mother Teresa? My answer to them is always the same thing. I just don't think about it. That's the honest truth. When he apologized the first time, I interrupted him when he started to go into the details on why he did it. I told him, I don't want the details as long as you're sorry and you promise you won't do it again. That's what matters. I've never held it against him as I feel if I am accepting his apology, I can't throw it back in his face. I don't understand why others can't grasp that. I love my boyfriend very much. He's been my only relationship and the only person I've told that I love. All my peers tell me I can do better, that I'm a nine and he's a six and it's really starting to fucking irritate me. I want my choices to be respected without the condescending undertone. I'd really love to hear your gal's opinion on this because I don't think it's fair to say once a cheater, always a cheater and that more people go through this than we know. Sorry for the long email. Stop apologizing. Apologize. Keep doing what you do. Okay, cool. I ru- I love this email because I think what a logical person. Yeah, he is. you super logical. We don't t- we don't talk about cheating a ton uh, on this podcast, and we certainly will in the future. Uh, but I wanted to read this because I think it, I think it's really great. And yeah, there are so many people treat cheating like it is murder. It's not. It's not murder. I've been cheated on twice and the relationship ended because ended because of that, but that's also the circumstances specific to our relationship. It, it didn't work out. Like cheating never has to be the end of a relationship. Right. I mean, I think it really depends and you really have to look at the situation. It's it should be treated like, you know, like any crime. Like look at look at what happened, look at the circumstances. Uh was it uh, malicious? Was it because things weren't going well? Yeah. Did someone just get drunk and make a mistake? Like there's a million reasons why you can cheat. And, and I mean, I think something like a serial cheating where you're going out and fucking the same person every, you know, week for um, months. If you're just cheating that's, multiple times. That's even, ridiculous. Like, yeah, absolutely. But but I think that when your friends and family talk to you, it's almost it almost seems like they're projecting their insecurities, not insecurities, but their doubts that they would have onto you. Mm-hmm. But they're not in that relationship. You are. And you did the absolute logical right thing to do, which is put it behind you, not think about it. 
and live your life with your boyfriend. Yeah. And it's not like when he said that he cheated on you, you just shrugged your shoulders. Like you didn't talk for six months. I think you yeah. like, yeah, I think you, he got the picture. Yeah. Like he, he was punished the appropriate amount for the crime that he committed. Yeah. And now, and if, and it's so great to hear that you are not thinking about it because if you're not thinking about it, then you're truly not bothered by it. Yeah. It's not like you're convincing yourself. And I mean, I don't know. There are some instances where I think people like love someone so much that they'll just make excuses for them. Um, so that could be maybe what your friends and family are concerned about. Like you're just making excuses she for this person, once. but it doesn't seem like you are. You're happy. You're fine. And as far as like getting your friends and family on your side, just be like, Hey, like this is like, I, I totally get where you're coming from, but like, this is my boyfriend. And I would appreciate like, if you didn't uh, disrespect him by talking about him in a negative way, like that, I, I love this person and I've, we've, we've handled this on our own. Also, I would kind of be insulted by somebody else who's not in my relationship telling me how I should feel about something. Yeah. Like I'm, you're emotionally mature and you moved on because that's the decision that seemed right to you. Mm -hmm. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. Get out of my goddamn business, ma. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, cheating isn't always not a big deal, but yeah. in this in this instance, you were fine with it and it was okay. So good for you. You moved on and you are a bigger person. The subject line of this email is sex life over, seriously contemplating suicide. And this is uh, written by a guy. After our second baby, we have not had sex for three months and it's looking like our sex life is over until after menopause. Can't afford a vasectomy. She's terrified of Paragard and the hormone birth, contr uh, birth control kills her sex drive and even makes sex for her painful when she would throw me a bone quote. We can't afford to have another child. Every type of condom causes her pain at least 95% of the time tried every type of lube and condom sex without birth control is always great though. It's not, uh, though. So it's not a lack of attraction or intimacy. I can't get off by any means other than insertion. I really enjoy oral, but it just gets me frustrated and wanting more. If she, she hates if I watch porn to the point she has almost left me when she found out I was looking at it. She checks my phone regularly to see if I have been looking at it. I don't want to ask her to do anything that scares her or causes her pain, etc. Yet just the past three months, I have been very frustrated, irritable and started to feel depressed. The more time passes, the more I think about the fact that this is probably going to be how the rest of my life is. And I dread it. And I don't want to spend the rest, uh, spend a lifetime like this, but killing myself will hurt her her and my kids and my parents. So we are back to me not wanting. Uh, I feel trapped. I love her, but I don't know what I will that I will ever be happy again. Deep down, I know I will have moments of happiness, but will likely be muted by the underlying depression. I don't know how to handle something like this. I can't talk to her about it and how seriously the issue is to me because then she feels like I'm pressuring her into Paragard, which is really the only option besides a vasectomy, she, which she hates the idea of because she still wants another kid, even though we compromise at two. I wanted one, she wanted three. I have tried tried to word it in a way that isn't pressuring her into the, the paragard, but no matter how I word it in the end, I sort of really am hoping she will go on the paragard. So I, uh, so I am pressuring her into getting it as much as I hate that, but we have no other options. It's either vasectomy or paragard and we can't afford the vasectomy and she doesn't like the idea, but if we can't enjoy sex, it's a waste of time and energy. We have been, we have been doing other things, but at some point you need to climax or everything else starts to be frustrating. And I think part of it is that she gets off just fine by other means I never have other than the masturbation with porn, which is definitely out of the question because I don't want to lose her either. Also, I forgot to mention that contracept, uh, that contracept, conceptual, wait, what? I also forgot to mention that conceptual kind of works Oh, maybe that's a form of birth control, but it's, uh, it, but it's effectiveness is questionable to use. And the goop makes her feel disgusting, which does not make for a sexually compatible mood for her. I'm lost. I don't know what to do. And I'm not sure if I'm strong enough to suffer th uh, this for a lifetime. Is there some way to come to terms with my situation and just move on and be happy despite knowing I will never enjoy sex again, or more likely, will we both at some point give in and have unprotected sex and we'll have another kid. She got pregnant with both kids after we quote, stopped trying not to have kids. We weren't actually trying to have, uh, to have either one after just one time, making the stress over money and paying bills unbearable. Thank you, man. Well, this is interesting. Cause I, I understand the, um, the effects of birth control, not wanting to go on it. Cause Steven and I had an argument about that mm -hmm. and he was so paranoid about 
not getting pregnant that he insisted on it and that pissed me off a little bit but then i found a birth control that worked for me so i don't know it's odd that your wife uh condoms hurt her i'm wondering if she has a latex allergy yeah i was like i mean I, because no one like loves condoms <laughs> right and i don't i don't love condoms but they're necessary for me and my partner to have sex without that worry in the back of our heads mm-hmm. and this is not a plug but skin condoms are latex free and there's all other kinds of options i would have I'm sure she's went to a gynecologist for all of this because clearly there's been some trial and error here. I really have a problem with her getting upset and uh, threatening to leave you because you jerk off to porn. Yeah, that's that is such bullshit. Well, and also any anytime someone says this person checks my phone attention, that is bullshit. Everybody listening to the podcast, if you have a significant other, I don't care if it's your boyfriend, I don't care if it's your husband, I don't care if it's your wife. If there is anyone who checks your phone like you are a goddamn fucking child, that is not okay, and that needs to stop immediately. I would never, ever ever ask anyone to see their phone and if you can't demeaning if you can't live without seeing someone else's phone there is no trust in your relationship and your relationship is broken you need to fix that checking the fucking phone isn't going to help anything it's so it's that drives me crazy yes crazy yes oh absolutely it's completely unnecessary and it's it's uh it's disrespectful to the trust that you thought you had in the relationship but you clearly don't Uh, With checking the phone. I think that's such bullshit. Oh, my God. And I have a lot of other things to say. First of all, you, writer, need to put your happiness. Your happiness is a priority. And I think it's really interesting because based off of a lot of emails that we've received from guys where their female, specifically their female partner, is no longer interested in having sex with them at the moment or they're going through a slump or they're, Mm -hmm. they're, they're pregnant and they're not horny or they just had a baby and they can't have sex and they're not horny or whatever it may be. Men get depressed, mm-hmm. I've noticed. And I did not realize that that was a thing. Um, well, because they seems pretty common. They feel unattractive too. Like I think it's so, uh, we're so obsessed with like women feeling unattractive, but men feel yeah. equally unattractive. Men, I think might feel more unattractive than women. They need to feel sexually wanted. Like that's very important. I think to both men and women, but I yeah. think a lot of times we forget that men need to feel like sexual creatures. Um, I, I have so many thoughts that I want to tell you. Number one, you you should establish with your with your I think you said wife right your wife um she should never be looking through your phone yeah. that is completely that needs to ridiculous stop today if she trusted you she wouldn't look through your shit and also you looking at porn is not cheating I thought that when I was 16 and almost dumped my boyfriend Darren because he was looking at porn um and then I realized that <laughs> that was completely ridiculous you have every right to watch pornography mm-hmm. um obviously like the wee kids are in the room but when it's a, yeah. but you know you're not dumb you know go to the bathroom and look at it on your phone yeah or if it's affecting like if if she thinks like when you watch porn you act in a different way or something that's a, a larger discussion to have because I, I have heard that oh, well, really? I mean yeah it, it, I mean men have been pretty open with me that they 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 tr- sexualize women they treat them they objectify them more when they've been watching a ton of porn oh, or yeah. a certain type of porn so I mean if there is an actual reason and maybe there's something that you're not telling us and there that yeah. a reason why your wife doesn't like you watching porn but if it's just because she doesn't like porn that's fucking ridiculous but also you need to have a conversation with with her about it because what if she has a reason in her head that she's not told you that you can offer some explanation to Mm -hmm. um you yeah you should have a serious conversation with her because that that is ridiculous and if i were you i would feel so frustrated and heartbroken and of course depressed that's completely understandable another thing fleshlights are a great sex toy for men which basically it's the it's a it's a vagina butthole or mouth the giant plastic flashlight you unscrew it and then you it's a sex toy so you put your dick in it they so, make throwaway ones too if you need if you need to hide it from your wife but you shouldn't have to hide it from your wife you that's shouldn't crazy. but it seems like you might have to. i know but for your sanity because i know that men like steven says this all the time like if i don't come for a certain amount of time i go crazy i know okay that's that's totally legitimate get a flashlight if insertion is the only thing that does it for you because i feel like that will feel as close to insertion other than insertion yeah i mean or you can do prison style and like get a put your cock in a toilet paper roll <laughs> That's a that's also an option that you could do for a much less a budget. Yeah, if you're on a budget. Boo, I will buy you a flashlight, boo boo. Oh um, my god. Email me. I'm serious. And and the other thing is 
if you you're this conversation i really think that you should have with her with your partner about snooping about pornography and I, i'm curious as to what she's so afraid of about you watching porn and also uh if you guys are truly unhappy like she needs to know how unhappy this makes you and how it's kind of now starting to be this undertone throughout your entire life, your day-to-day living. Um, that's a really big deal. And your happiness is very important. And you need to have that open conversation because if for some reason she, after talking and talking and trying to figure it out and trying to come to a conclusion, uh, you, you feel in your heart of hearts that you two do not make sense together and are not compatible. It's better. I've had this conversation a lot lately and I just want to put it out there as a PSA. Staying together for kids is not, I I have never heard of that being a successful idea. You're making your kids' lives miserable. Well, especially when one of the options that you have presented to us is killing yourself. Yes. Like what, like what are you talking about? Divorce divorce your wife before you do that. Christ. Yeah. Get on Tinder. I was like, God, if you think a divorce is going to hurt your kids, guess what's going to hurt your kids a lot more? You killing yourself. Like, no. Give you and your dick a chance. (laughs) That is way too traumatic of an option. I understand that a lot of times in these situations, it's so hard to take a step back and, and, and see the picture from a distance so mm-hmm. you feel trapped but she needs to know how unhappy this is making you and it's and all the things that she's doing that i really truly feel are ridiculous maybe she has reasons she should tell you them and you should talk it out but if for whatever reason you feel in your gut that you you do not deserve a sexless uh no sex for the rest of your life that is ridiculous and sex is very important and sexual compatibility is so important that if your partner is like nope nope not budging not budging she's not a good partner you can't communicate and come to agreements and decisions and compromises maybe that's not the best person for you long term right well and your kids will be say, happier if you're happier your children will be happier yeah you need i mean like you're in a romantic relationship with this no person romance. they're not you're, this is not a friend Like sex is part of the deal. I'm not like you can never force your partner to have sex, but like if they stop, start refusing to have sex with you, that is 100% grounds for separation. And I think people are scared to like say that or admit that, but like, no, 100%, that's part of the deal. That's part of what you signed up for, especially when it's a monogamous relationship. What? So if if, so, if your monogamous partner just decides that they don't have sex anymore, that you're you're in prison, not having sex. Like, absolutely. That's ridiculous. You shouldn't be in pussyless prison, sir. Not in that an option. And, you know, and maybe there, I'm sure there's an, you know, she has a side to the story that we're not hearing, obviously, because this is your email, but you guys need to talk it out. There's a lot of things that are very uh, peculiar going on here uh, that need to be discussed. And if it's, these things aren't budging, then you need to break up and, you you know, deserve better. Your kids, yeah, your kids will be fine. They're they're not going to be the only divorced uh, kid with divorced parents in their class. I don't want to encourage a divorce when it doesn't need to be, but it's not going to be the end of the world. Parents living in separate households and they make it work because they actually get along so much better now and they're happy and they're smiling and they're they're better to their son probably you know what i mean like just that 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 leaks into other areas of your life yeah Um, i mean having having uh parents is just a nightmare because it's human beings with a bunch of flaws that you didn't choose raising other human beings who would then pick up those flaws plus more flaws like you know it's the whole thing's a mess so it's a miracle we're all alive you guys for real we made it so far however old you are listening to this (laughs) pat yourself on the back yeah you did it you lived another day bravo (laughs) uh and on that note, uh, we are going to introduce today's guest. Yes, we recorded this uh, this week's episode of Guys We Fucked at Hell Yes Fest in New Orleans at the Joy Theater. Um, at the beginning, we bring some fuckers up on stage and talk to them, and then we bring up our very funny guest. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show, Carly Aquilino. I only fucked you as a joke.
Oh yeah, we didn't uh, plan on that. It takes a second to untie them. Um, we uh, that was just, a forty dollar bid, and we really yeah, wish you had appreciated so I hope it. Hope you more. enjoyed it. Forty dollars. <laughs> this is our first time in New Orleans, and fucking awesome city. And we got beads. Oh yeah, I said it all. And already. mine says, "You make me horny, baby." But there, <clears throat> the catcher is there's two child frogs with giant dicks sticking out. Yeah, and mine has police hat and police flashlight, which I don't, I guess is just different from a regular flashlight in that sometimes you hit people with it. Um, yeah, I don't, that's not nice. And it says lay flat on your back and spread them. So we're doing what we can to get, you know, the rape culture items off the streets. Yeah, by buying them. One by one. It's ours now, so it's in the right hands. <laughs> And later, like after the show, after the show is done, we're going to be handing out skin condoms to everybody. Yeah. Because skin condoms are great yeah. and you should always wrap it up. And right. especially if you have a latex allergy, they're latex free. Buy condoms not online. Yeah. I knew we, it would be weird to do it like an ad read. Yeah. I was in like, the we definitely weren't paid to say that. We just love skin condoms. I do love them. I do use them though. I used them last night. <laughs> Dude. Six. Um, how are you? I'm great. Yeah? Yeah. You look great. Thank you. You look great. Shut up. You we got, look great. We got ready in the rooms next to one another, but we haven't seen each other since. It's like a wedding. <laughs> it was great. So at the top of every podcast, we usually read emails, but when we do it live, we bring people up on stage. Is right. there anybody in here that has a problem and they want to just come and talk about it in front of a bunch of strangers? Right. You don't have to say your real name. Which Everyone's one? laughing like, what a good joke, Christina. No, we're serious. You guys, you all, everything's just figured out? You got everything figured out? You're in the yeah. front row on a Wednesday at Guys We Fuck the Live podcast. Everything is not going right. <laughs> you want to do it? Yeah, come on. <laughs> everything is going very wrong. <laughs> well, luckily, we have a brave young woman to have the, take a seat. Hi. It, it's a little bit of a... Give yeah. her a round of applause. Yeah. Hi. Hey, girl. What's your name? I'm Courtney. Hi, Courtney. Thanks Thanks. for coming to the show. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. (laughs) Thank you so much. (laughs) So uh, what's going on in your life? So I have this ex-boyfriend. Yeah. And he won't go away. So here's the thing about 2016. Like, let us know. (laughs) Yeah. What's up? What's up with 2016? You might not know this, but like (laughs) social media is great, but also terrible because... People can find you everywhere. So, right. like, we broke up forever ago, over a year. Okay. Stalker. How long did you date? Like, two and a half years. Okay. So I thought you were going to say months, and I was, was going to have no, to kick you like, off the stage. No. Straining order done. Next. No. No, we, like, lived Bye. together. It was pretty serious. Okay. But, like, he won't go I'll away. So, like, how I've, won't he I've, go away? What's that? Like, how won't he go away? Like, Mike like, Myers, like, you murdered him eight times, and he's still living? Yes. Or he shows just, up at your house when you're in the bathtub? Like <laughs> It was just like that. Uh, no, but he keeps trying to contact me, and I just keep blocking him and ignoring it, but he just keeps, like, finding other ways to contact me. Like, he's, I've blocked him on email, on text, on Facebook. He's DM'd me on Twitter, on Instagram. Like, he what is he found saying a way to, to contact yeah. me via Venmo. Like, it's really obsessive. Wow. Yo! It, the second he contacts you on LinkedIn, that's when you got to get a restraining order because that's fucked up. He's like, he's, he actually he's sent eBayed me, you. <laughs> he sent me a message that said, did you un- connect with me on LinkedIn? I was like, dude, get the fuck away. Oh my <laughs> like, God, he did go the LinkedIn route. He did, like everywhere. And there are all these channels to get in touch with people, but that also means when you break up with someone, there's all these channels that like you can't get away from them from. Right. Right. And when you're a regular adult person with like a logical brain, you do not, you take advantage of all the 12, 13 channels, but he's doing it. What is he trying to say to you when he's contacting you? So, um, it was a pretty messy breakup and, um, how so details. Yeah. Well, what um, happened? So, uh, wow, this is, this is what y'all do all the time. Just right. Isn't your, it terrible? Spill your personal. Isn't it the worst idea that anyone's ever had? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, what, why do I why do this? you think that was a good idea? <laughs> um, well, it's mostly strangers, except for one girl I know here. Uh, two girls hey I know girl. here. Hey, girl. Hey, two um, girls. Uh, but basically, uh, we were long distance for a while, and he moved from Denver to live with me. Um, and then I found out that he had been cheating on me, like, the whole time. Like, before he even moved. And I was like, why did you 
Why'd what? you move here? Yeah. What's he wanted to that? become a better man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's definitely what happened. <laughs> LOLs, y'all. So how'd you find out? I found out um, actually on accident when um, we were at this thing called Red Dress Run, which is a New Orleans thing, but basically everyone, guys and girls, <laughs> we all wear we all wear red dresses and, and just get, get black really out wasted. Fucked up, and yes, that's I it. knew that was the answer. <laughs> that's it. AKA. For a cause or just for the fuck of it? I actually think there is a cause, but I don't know. <laughs> if you don't, I don't know, know what, what it is. is. <laughs> My girl. I don't at all. Oh, um, boy. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I lost my phone at a bar and I asked to use his and then all these texts came up. I wasn't even snooping. Like, I wish it had been my own fault for finding it. Yeah. Um, and he denied it. And I was like, dude, like, I, it's right here. What did the text say? Um, it was, it was, uh, yeah, I mean, it was all sexting stuff. And then like, I scrolled up and saw photos and there were like photos that I was in that he was like sending these people. And then I asked him. Uh, I was like, how many people, like, how many girls was this? And he said, I'd have to think about it. And I was like, all right. Did he say it with that level of sass? Uh, No. I mean, he was like, "Uh, I'm not sure I'd have to think about it. I was like, like, so that was your artistic (laughs) choice to read, create it like that. Okay. I just want to make sure because I was like, wow, I would just hit him in the face. Yeah, just punch him. (laughs) So, like, uh, that same day, I went home. And I was way too drunk to do anything, so I went to bed. But then the next morning, I woke up, and I just packed up all his stuff, nice and neat, put it on the front porch, and I was like, bye. (laughs) That was a very nice way. Usually it goes, you throw the shit on the lawn, but you folded it up for him. I had already thrown his phone against a brick wall, so I I did have a little moment of crazy there. Uh, I... I don't think that was crazy. I last, think that was justified. Yeah, last time I, uh, my last boyfriend, I discovered he was cheating. I went upstairs to his room with the girl he was cheating on me with, and uh, I like pushed him against the brick wall. So that's way better. So there might I feel really a, bad about there that. Sorry, Chris. Slap across the face in there too that I didn't mention. Oh, he slapped him. <laughs> okay. So what is he? So what is he saying so, when he's so basically, contacting you? Um, abuse is funny as long as it's women on men, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not proud of that, y'all. <laughs> Um, no, but uh, he basically is always reaching out to me because he wants me to accept his apology. Oh, God. He's so sorry. He's changed. That's for like, his ego. In the, I think, I actually, I mean, I read it online, so everything on the internet is true. Um, but I read that um, people with narcissistic tendencies I was just, gonna just say narcissist. need, like, attention in general. And they mm-hmm. can't handle when there is a breakup or the ending of a relationship that isn't on their terms. Ooh, that's so what So they happens. need to be in so, control of everything. Yes. Do you have his phone number handy? I... <laughs> we didn't tell you. Uh, it's in my, my, in my phone, which is in my purse. Okay. You don't... You know it by heart. You don't know I it. actually... I know, like, the... I, I don't even know my coach. boyfriend's phone number. I know, the, <laughs> I know my mom's phone number, and I know my own. Are you getting it? <laughs> you don't, oh, my God. <laughs> ah, very smooth move, friend. Thanks, Natalie. You can give it to me, and I'll call him. Okay. This is so embarrassing. This is now crazy. It's fun. Just... Yeah. Tell it to me. <laughs> I'm pulling it up. Talk amongst yourselves. I got a lot of contacts, y'all. What's his name? Joey. Joey. Ugh. Ugh. Whoa. Oh my god. I Wait, know I should I be it. one of the girls that he sent a message to, and I just want to let him know? Oh yeah, we need him? a game. We need a game plan. We need a game plan. Oh, I have it deleted. I deleted it. You deleted his number. Yeah. Uh, well, I thought I had it, but that's okay. It was a good try. It was a good try. So So basically like my problem is that I don't want to give him the satisfaction of responding, but I also feel like at what point do I just need to say like, fuck off, leave me alone. I'm obviously haven't answered you in a year. So you haven't said leave me alone yet at all. Yeah. I said, leave me alone in the beginning, but then I was like, okay, well, he's not listening. I'm just not I don't want to give him the satisfaction of a response. I'm just not going to say anything at all. And I thought he would get the hint. And it's been a fucking but year. And he hasn't gotten the hint. That's because so he's a narcissist. I wanted to see if y'all think I should try the go the fuck away route. Or if I should just continue to ignore it and keep blocking him wherever he finds me and hope he eventually goes away. I, I say go the fuck away route. You need to stop contacting me. This is extremely inappropriate. We broke up a year ago. Stop stalking me. It's actually creepy. And I know you wouldn't want to creep me out. But that's what you're doing. So go fuck yourself, he's Joey. Grown, he's a grown-ass man. Like, he's 33 years old. So it's ridiculous. 
Ooh. I wish you had his number. If you I, mean, I mean, I mean, make sure number, to add that you don't accept his apology. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Like, like an, I, well, this is cherry on top apology. of that. Fuck you, Sunday. It's uh. fun to add an extra jab. <laughs> And yeah, I, t I, would, I would tell him that he needs to stop. This is completely inappropriate. He's going to keep doing it, and it's not acceptable. And if any time during the next hour you have a friend that texts you his number, you raise your hand, and we'll call him and tell him that. We'll call him from our phone. Yeah, and just tell him that he's a narcissist. Yeah. We'll break it to him. We'll break it to him. And then unless he's a stand-up comedian, that's an inappropriate way to be. Yeah. He's not funny. <laughs> like... That should funny. have been the first sign that it wasn't going to work. Right. Yeah. Just no sense oh, of humor. yeah. No. Right. All right. I yeah. hope he doesn't hear this. <laughs> Tell him to go fuck off. I mean, I, I hope, hope he does, he does hear, it. hear it. Well, no, if he does hear it, then he'll be so happy that we spent this long talking about So much about attention. Him. That's exactly where I was going with You're that. right. You're right. Absolutely. Then maybe he'll stop. Maybe he won't. Not. Probably, probably not. not, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Tell him to fuck off. And in the meantime, if you get his number, just let me know. All right. Thank you guys so <laughs> Give much. Give him a round of applause. Yay. Thank you so much for coming up. Do you know where you're going? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. But if we're like, no, it turns into a slide. Trick. <gasps> That'd be so cool. All right, we have time for one, one more. more problem and try to make it even worse than that problem. Yeah, who's, who's got something worse? I know you do. I see our emails. Wait, is there a waitress service? I see people smelling cups in the front row. That's never a good sign. Are they cups of cocaine? I mean, I don't think they've got It's New Orleans. So a hand in the back, oh, a really hand, high yeah. one. Come on over, go up the exit sign, and then just... Person who was standing to make themselves higher than everyone else, please come forward. Good call, good call, girl. You put in the extra effort. <laughs> we see you. I really hope you find that guy's phone number, P.S. Joey, I'm going to call him. Who over 17 goes by Joey, dear Lord? This guy? Yeah. It's Joey. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna call him Joseph if we do find his number. Hi, how are you? Hi. Take a seat. Take a mic. Take a seat. What's your name? Wow. Hey, Jacqueline. Give it up for Jacqueline, everybody. Jacqueline, everybody. Is it weird to say that I just listened to your podcast in the shower about two hours ago? No, Did that's you completely masturbate? appropriate. <sighs> Did I? Love you, girls. Love you. So many shower podcasts. <laughs> So How long are on? your showers? Yeah, <laughs> mine too are long. long. <laughs> Hour and forty minutes sometimes. You got wow. a portable head that you take. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what's going on? So I would like to know, as a girl who has chosen to not bear children, mm -hmm. what a witch! <laughs> Busted. Okay, yeah, just kidding. Leave. <laughs> um, so it changes the dating life, right? Because you're not looking for men based on like procreation and the future that you were we doing that before that. <laughs> i just think that maybe i wasn't like, doing that earlier i was but just yeah. like who makes and me I feel the worst <laughs> you and that has been <laughs> guilty who so. will laugh at my jokes i'll fuck you okay <laughs> so you're out and you're having fun and you're hooking up with guys and it's fun and you find that more often than not you're sucking so much dick and not getting <laughs> reciprocal head. Oh. And I would like to know how to appropriately ask to reciprocate the blowjobs that I'm giving. It's fine. I love it. But, like, what do you say? This was a bigger problem than the problem yeah, before. You're right. Thank you you're for right. bringing it to our I'm attention. I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. You're a hero. I have the chills right now. Wow. I feel like you got a good line. I just say, hey, eat my pussy. Yeah, I mean, what? So, okay. Okay, well, the eat my pussy, like, that. this doesn't turn me on because, like, the and first that... time I ever watched porn was, like, accidentally in the third grade. Wow. Me too, me too. And me too. it was, like, my friend's, it. like, mom's VHS porn with her stepdad. Yeah, we didn't know what it was going to be. Wait, 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 we just wait. popped it in. So it was, an, it was a... An amateur porn? It was an it was a obese people porn, like <laughs> super obese. And you were like, give me print. And oh, yeah. God. Like right with her like this and like him right here. And my friend Rachel had just reheated spaghetti Rachel. in Tupperware and was like sitting on the bed eating the reheated pasta and like the sound of the noodles. You and the have smell. not forgotten this. And then the your Vision. attention to detail is it was just Charles like, Dickens esque. <laughs> it stuck with me, you know. And, and, and how long it's did sticking you? Sticking with me. <laughs> how long did you watch it for? Um, 
Perhaps the whole thing. Thirty seconds for me. Okay. I just I really felt sick to my stomach. Did you barf you know? on the spaghetti? You know, I blacked out at that point, like mentally. And so wait, how never really could watch porn pussy again, eating. you know. So eating pussy is just like that's what all of a sudden oh, I God. picture okay, is like the it. actual like eating spaghetti pussy <laughs> that you know. But you don't think oh. of that when you're sucking dick. Dick and no, no, there was no dicks in the when you the thirty seconds of the porn that you caught a glimpse at, huh? No, you've no. never watched porn since. I mean, tried. You know, my friend Laura out here, James Dean. He's her number one. That's a tough one, you know. It's yeah, like he's like rapey and shit. Yes, but like right, okay. Uh, Meaning he's a rapist. This yeah. is taking yeah. so many different turns. Mm -hmm. <sighs> so many levels of issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, so back to like you know. So you've sucked a lot of dicks, and the guy's just like, all right, good night. Yeah. Do you suck him until he, like, does he come? Yeah. Oh. Because I was going to say, don't, don't suck his dick until he has an orgasm. But wait, and then what gonna happens? Fall asleep. So you suck his dick, and then he comes, and then he falls asleep, or then he gets up and goes, I'm definitely not uh, eating your pussy, and then leaves the room. Or, like, you know, walks off the porch, like, you know. Back. Where are you fucking... <laughs> So this is more of a New Orleans yeah, story. New Orleans. It's like very New Orleans. Like, uh, right. He just joins a parade and walks away. And you're like, but what the fuck? Right, yes. right, right. Lost another. How many times has this happened? That's really frustrating. Oh, okay. you're so upset. No, I understand. Well, okay. And to, but to be real, it's like there's a thrill. I have to say that there's like in New Orleans, like this whole star fucking thing where it's like, there are all these musicians and like, it's just they a, turn you when on. I think and celebrity, I think New Orleans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone just Wait, got musicians, mad. <laughs> like, but aren't there musicians like everywhere? <laughs> yes, but like here, it's like, we live here, we see them all the time. Like there's just like real people and there's this like thrill to like watching them perform and then like following them into the green room and then like and following them into the balcony. Them a blue job. And then Whoa. it's like, this is so yeah, specific. Like, okay. Yeah, but then like, how do you just ask for reciprocity? So you're What's... blowing musicians at the balcony above their venue after they just played. Right. Okay, got it. So got wait, it, wait. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Are we That's talking fine. like, but like Lo local celebrities I or like this was an anti-slut shaming thing. No, no, no. Like, I just want to make sure I'm because. I'm just asking how no, we no, can no. get reciprocity. We're making fun of you for being a star fucker, not a slut. There's a difference. <laughs> but also it's hard to eat a pussy. I mean, maybe it's not, but like I usually want to be on a bed. And if there's just a It's balcony. hard to eat a pussy when your ego's in the way, I think is the answer to this question. Like, it's like, no one, no one, like I would never give a blow job if I didn't have to, but I have not I reached though. that level of success. Once I do. How about you make them go down on you first before you suck their dick? Uh, please, how do you ask for it? How do you say it? Okay, here's an important how question. How do you make that, like, Whisper it sexually. Don't, like, don't, just, just be like, just whisper in their ear, I want you to eat my pussy. I'm so glad that my brother's in the front row for this yeah, one. Yeah, sorry, Chris. <laughs> right there. Um, do you go to suck their dick, or do they ask you to suck their dick? It's just like, it's making out, and it's fun, and then it's just like, it feels good, but then it's like, okay, but then, like, why isn't it just a given that it should just be? He doesn't do one ways. of these, right? No. Okay, good, 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 good. Because I'm like, then you go, you go for the dick. It's not a Which given because, sense. like, who would want to put in more work than they have to? That's why it's not a given. Like, no one's like, oh, I like want to do extra credit even though I'm already passing the class. You know what I'm saying? I would make him finger me before I suck this dick, because fingering's more doable on a porch. You know what I mean? I really, I mean, you got to think of logistics. Think so. Yeah, less so, giving and more demanding. So I think it's like kind of rude to take anybody's head and put it towards your crotch. But if you take someone's hand and put it down your pants, if you're already making out and it's already sexual, then get off that way. Right. And then be like, bye. Right. <laughs> and just like, remember, like if these are like thing on the go things, like your pussy is not a Lunchable. So right. it's oh, not like a to go item. It's more of like, I'm eating this here. You know, it's a to stay in, like dine sushi. in. Yeah, like it sushi. is. It's just it, like more it, of a, it's, yeah, there's more involved. <laughs> That's a really good question, though. I would, because if you're seeing this as a pattern, take their pan and go, Poof. I mean, don't say, do that sound effect. Don't creep with your mouth. Then they'll be like, how old are you? And they're like, shut up. And then after you're, they finger you, just take out a flute and play it and walk away. 
<laughs> That's what I would Who's do. Who's a star fucker now? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm too Watch huge. My flute play. I'm a huge star fucker. I don't care. It's fine. Um, I think you have to be comfortable demanding what you want and and being like being willing to risk not getting anything and walking away empty handed. You just have to be willing to take that risk. Like there'll be another dick to suck. Like I know that's like a dream for everybody, so but like dicks in the there'll same. be another. <laughs> I would suggest putting their hand down in your vagina area and making sure that they go to town. Basically, I've just given up on the whole thing, you know. You shouldn't give up. You shouldn't give up. Have you ever put a guy's, a musician, like, in that situation, that scenario? Have you ever kind of encouraged him to get you well, off? Because the idea is that they'll play you like their instrument. Right, know? and that's why when you watch someone play bass, you're like, that's how they would finger me. I'm into it. Or like that, you know, no, no triple tongue thing with the trumpets, you know? Oh, I didn't even think of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's need to go out. Tr like trumpet players? <laughs> it's just... I mean, I have a very strict no musicians rule for this I reason <laughs> in particular. Because they just yeah, you suck you, their dick and then they leave. You can't trust musicians. I mean, <laughs> I didn't want to just come out and say that, but like, that's your problem. Stop fucking musicians. <laughs> It's like, it's like if I could make a list of people not to fuck, number one, 100% comedians, and then number two, definitely musicians. musicians, and number three, probably hockey players. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're, they're rude. <laughs> I mean, every experience I've had with a mus musician, I'm sure there's some great ones out there, but... Oh, and then number four is, like, artists that you've never heard of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, unless Andy Warhol came back from the dead and you decided he loved dick. pussy. You like, suck his It's dick. not him. <laughs> well, I just admire that you know, you just know this stuff and I'm still fucking figuring it out, you know? I mean, we don't know it. We're just trying to figure it out, too. We're just taking a stab at it. <laughs> Girl, you yeah, You could be good. Go after the show. I'll, we'll give you some skin condoms if it gets to that point. But you make somebody finger you after the show. <laughs> Consensually. You're not allowed to leave this theater until, until you are someone fingered. Someone fingers you, Jacqueline. These three guys are like, we're on it. <laughs> Look at all these handsome men. I'm not saying, you know. Does that help? Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you Give so much. Give a round Give of applause, her, everybody. Her hand. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. It's nice, so nice to meet you. I'll give you a hug. I'm such an awkward hugger. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. We can hug. I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> Watch Karin hug. My dress awkwardly. is up my ass. Watch Karin hug awkwardly. Perfect. All right. So uh, now we are ready to bring on our guest for uh, today's podcast. We're very excited. We're very excited. It's always nice when you have a guest who's substantially more famous than you. Yeah. Um, I love it. <laughs> you know her from probably the show Girl Code. Please give it up for Carly Aquilino. Oh! Woo! Thanks, Carly. Hey, girl. I brought so many beverages. Yeah, you bring <laughs> all the beverages you want, I'm gonna girl. You're going to be so hydrated. It's going to be great. This is great. I love it. Where's the girl? Is she getting fingered right now? Where's yeah, she she's busy. So. She can't Maybe. be here for the rest of the podcast. She, <laughs> she had to, she was escorted out. It was like, <laughs> you have to go get fingered out. She, she left like a top spinning on top of a finger. <laughs> right. Oh, like a dreidel. Happy Yom Kippur, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's not, it's not really a holiday where you say happy, but you know. Is that a sad one? <laughs> it's one where you just sit in temple all day and think about what a piece of shit you are. So. are you Oh my God. Or did you have any religious background? I'm not. I mean, Me I was raised Catholic, but oh. we didn't like go to church or, oh. you what know, I, got, I actually got kicked out of religion when I was like in, yeah, like the whole out of thing grade. or like religion? a class. N not out of the religion. <laughs> um, I don't think so, at least. But actually, maybe I did. Now that I think about it. I was like, bye. Yeah. I just like missed too many classes. They used, huh. to go, they used to make you go on Saturdays and it's like, I'm not, Ugh. I'm not doing that. Like <laughs> I'm not going to go on a Saturday and like read the Bible. So <laughs> I got That's kicked horrible. out and they like yelled at my mom. And then my mom told like a nun that she was going to hell. Oh, she told the nun. That's wow. hilarious. Really That's a that. real story that actually happened to me. So to answer your question, I'm not religious. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm, they tried, like everybody tried, but it just didn't work. So I didn't want to like go on Saturday. It didn't take, yeah. Yeah. I hear you. <laughs> I don't know what it was about to answer your question. <laughs> I didn't learn any. I received communion, but I didn't receive confirmation. Is that when you get like the bread and grape yeah, juice? Yeah, you get like the bread. Minor? It's not even bread. 
It's a cracker. It's a cracker. Yeah, it's yeah. a fucking cracker. I wouldn't even call it. It's like disgusting. Yeah. It's like doesn't taste good at all. Jesus's body tastes gross. Yeah. <laughs> body yeah. tastes real nasty. It's literally yeah. disgusting. <laughs> yeah. Did they, your parents, give you any type of sex talk when you were a kid? Like, how did you learn what sex was? My mom told me. She was like, well, it was weird. Hey, Carly, so like, I come was, here. yeah, <laughs> lean in. like my mom and I have been really close all the time. So even when I was younger, like she kind of gave me the talk, like when you fall in love with somebody, Aww. Uh, okay, mom, um, <laughs> sweet notion. That's like such a lie. <laughs> like yeah. I, she like forgot to say that that was a lie, but she was like, when you fall in love with somebody, you're going to like have urges. These oh. are the word, like the key words that parents use. They're like urges. urges. And then when my mom found out I had sex, like I had told her that I had sex for the first time. And she was like, well, we need to get you on birth control ASAP. Like she did the That's right awesome. thing. She was Super cool about it. She yeah. Didn't walk and out I was of the like, restaurant you were in and not talk to you for yeah, two weeks. That's she was really good. nice That's great. about it. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And then, but it actually got worse. Like I kind of wish she would have shunned me because <laughs> she was like, um, you need to go on birth control. I said, I didn't want to go on birth control. I'm like, no, we're using protection. She's like, condoms don't always work. And I was like, Unless yeah, they do. Unless skin condoms. condoms work. <laughs> anyway. Oh, is that the sponsor? Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> you smelled us from a mile well, away, Carly. <laughs> yeah. No, I just love skin condoms. I knew, yeah. <laughs> I really do, though. But, um, yeah, so I was like, condoms do always work. And she was like, no, they don't. That's how you were born. <laughs> so I was like, what? Oh, Mom, shit. you crazy. <laughs> so then, that point. <laughs> yeah, she made that point. So I was a mistake. And everything's been great ever since wow yeah <laughs> did you ever have like any weird kid masturbation stories i feel like i have a ton i think like i think my mom walked in on me masturbating once <laughs> oh, really? and yeah my mom like walked in on me masturbating because i would like masturbate like when i first found out i can masturbate i was like i'm doing this all the time oh, yeah. like not couch, waiting for the, the nighttime, like yeah. during the day. I was like, I'm literally just going to always masturbate. And she Same, knew. That's what I thought. Yeah. Like, this is a magical button that I'm like, I found. Yeah, I'm like, why day. would I ever want to not feel this way? Like I'm constantly <laughs> masturbating. Did you know though that I thought I would get pregnant and I was like waiting for the yeah. day that I would pee and I would, I was like eight. Yeah. I'm like, there is, I would look at the toilet paper for blood. I'm like, I'm going to have to tell my mom soon. Yeah. Oh Wait, oh my God. Masturbating? Fully. I thought I was going to get pregnant. I, I thought, didn't get any talk. Yeah. I thought you get pregnant like from from kissing. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> but that was like also weird that I thought that. Um, but yeah, my mom knew that I was because she came into my room and I like I guess there was like a book on my bed like from I guess I had like put my book bag on my bed. And so, she like, was like nothing. She reeks walked of in on me. <laughs> yeah, she like book. walked in on me masturbating and I opened a book and she was like, I know you're lying. You were not reading a book. Like what were you doing? Like that was like what she caught me because I never I was so bad in school. So she was like, you weren't reading. <laughs> oh, I was like, why did she assume you weren't reading? Because no, I wasn't reading. You really weren't reading. And I reading. never was reading. I was always masturbating, you guys. <laughs> never reading. And that's why you didn't do well in school. Yeah, and that's why I'm a comedian. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's my life now. No reading required. <laughs> I just, yeah. Did she, like, say anything else after that? Like, okay, cool, like, your she, body. Yeah, she was like, it's natural, you're a person. Like, th these are things that are going to happen when you get older. You know, like, older. it's okay, just embrace it. That's yeah. nice. My mom's super cool. My mom's super cool. She was like, don't think you're weird. Like, everybody goes through this. And I was like, God, you don't, damn. though. That's gross. <laughs> Did you ever hear right. your parents having sex? No, thank God, because I, I would die. Yeah. I'd I would die. Yeah. I know so many people that have, like, walked in on their parents yep. having sex. I've never have, never heard a sound. Have you? No. I, there was one incident in the hallway downstairs where I thought I oh heard God. something. But then I was, like, uh. I, I was like, we just live in a very old colonial home. So sure. it couldn't have been. It was just ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> it, was ghost. it was just, yeah, the ghosts were fucking in your house. <laughs> it was the ghosts of relationship yeah. past. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You told us a, a very little bit of a story backstage about yeah. someone in, you and someone in jail. Right. Me and somebody in jail. Um, Go. Explain. <laughs> so I have really great judgment. I, um, yeah. When I'm dating a guy, I'm like, he has to be perfect. And like, so I dated this guy that was in jail. <laughs> he was in jail when, before you started dating. He was go, okay. So I started dating him when he was on probation. Okay. okay. 
you guys stop being so judgmental. And he was in rehab, so it's like whatever. He was trying to like get better, but he Did had he to go. Clip? He had to be in rehab. He, it, like what? He didn't want to go to rehab. Like he had to go. Oh. So yeah, so, like, like whatever. Yeah, rehab. like people make mistakes. <laughs> like it's not even a big deal. So he's like, no, he's the one. Obviously, I thought that. And then he ended up violating his probation because he was amazing, and like <laughs> <laughs> he went to jail. So I'm like, oh, perfect. Like a normal person would have been like, I should probably stop dating this guy that's in jail. But I was like, this no. guy will never cheat on me. Yeah. <laughs> and now I always know where he is. This is I know where he is. Like how but dating can a guy, guy who doesn't drink. It's so yeah, nice. It's I don't like, have to worry I, about it. It's totally fine. It's like dating a gay guy. It's like yeah. I know you're not gonna fuck any other girls. Right. Like you're in jail. So I'm like, okay, he's in jail gonna be fine nothing's gonna happen he had this court date by the way i was an amazing like jail girlfriend like i sent him a cake to what? jail and they like, gave it to do that they gave it they smushed it but they oh. gave it to him all smushed <laughs> what did they smush it to make sure nothing was inside that it? there were no like weapons in it yeah or but drugs what if it was like a weed cake he should have made a weed i know cake i should have been like really cool i should have been that really cool nice. and gave him a weed cake but i gave i sent him like a cake because he was like going to court the next day <laughs> And he like, and they smushed the cake. But did then it they say anything on the top? Him, it did say like, good luck at oh. court. <laughs> like, so disgusting. Like, this is so disgusting. Did you know they were going to smash it? Did I you have didn't. an inkling? I had a feeling. I was like, there's no way I could just send stuff <laughs> into jail. Right, like everyone have would it. be baking and going. Yeah. <laughs> like, you'd be like, oh my God, everybody has a sweet tooth in yeah. the penitentiary. Wow. I love pastry. Yeah. <laughs> but they smushed it. They gave it to him. He loved it. He loved it because he, he was in jail. Like yeah. he had no other option. Yeah. So he ate the smushed cake and then he went to court the next day. And I was like, oh, my God, my boyfriend's like in court. He was either so going to get out of. Yeah. It's so <laughs> hot. Like, I'm so nervous. What I do. So <laughs> poor me. Oh, my God. What am I going to do? He was either going to get out of jail that day or like go to jail for like oh. a really fucking long time. Right. Hence the cake. I yeah. The cake. So what I was like, all right, was this might be he's a, he's a monster. <laughs> he's literally a living monster. Like why did why he's was, a nightmare? Did you know the crimes that he was up for? Yes. <laughs> what were they? Can I was them? such a fan. <laughs> he was like. Uh, he's he's I miss him. I do. I miss him. I'm trying to remember what he did. I was he like, was was like, like Walt, uh, White, like Walter White, like making meth and like something cool and creative. No, it, like, wasn't, no, it wasn't even creative. It was no. like getting into too many fights, like getting a DUI, like okay. doing stupid oh. things oh, okay. and just constantly like I think he got caught with like weed a few times. Oh. But it's like it's weed. So I was like, eh, he's he's still the one. So then. I didn't hear from him the whole court date day. And I was like, oh my God. He was like, probably busy. He's probably in jail. <laughs> like I was so upset, but he would, I would, it was so embarrassing because he would like call me like collect. And you had a paper, and right? I would, no, he had a calling card. Oh, it was like fancy. Did you give him the calling yeah, card? Yeah, it was like classy. It was classy. <laughs> so <laughs> I was nervous that he was going to be in jail forever. And then I look online and like we have a mutual friend and I look online and there's pictures of like him leaving court. So he's like, he's actually a musician. Okay. I was gonna say, I was like, is he just a so guy? He's a musician. He's not like some random guy. Where's Jacqueline? Girl, she getting fingered in the back. Okay. She's, <laughs> she's literally getting fingered. <laughs> Probably by him. Like we don't know where he is. Maybe. Like, he's MIA. Um, but he was a musician. So I saw online that he was like leaving court with his ex-girlfriend. <gasps> no. no. So no. I got cheated on by somebody that was in jail. Like, and that was the whole reason why I was with him. I was like, you're in jail. Like, this is kind of perfect. Yeah. Works like, out. That you, there's no, there's like no girls even allowed near you. Like, literally. Would you have been able and to then, fuck him though? Can you fuck people in jail? I think there might be if a thing. Dating. There's conjugal visits, but I think you have to be married. You have to be married. Yeah. I was working on it. I was working on it. <laughs> But had, had you uh, had sexual contact with him before he went to jail? No. Oh my god. What? Yeah, I know. So I was like waiting for did him to like I wasn't girlfriend? even hooking up with that. He didn't know I was his girlfriend. Uh, he didn't know I was his girlfriend. Okay. A lot like, of times guys don't know that I'm their girlfriend and it's like yeah, so hard. Like I tell them yeah, you know, right. But they're and, like, and they're like, OK, they're like, I'm in jail. Like, I can't do it. <laughs> he didn't, that's not yeah. a no. Yeah, that's, exactly. It's never a no, a no, but it's never. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know what to do. Like, you're my boyfriend. But <laughs> I was 
I really like thought he was my boyfriend, but I also wasn't hooking up with anybody else because I was like, oh no, he's gonna call me at like three and then he's gonna call me again at seven. <laughs> like I was like, <laughs> I'm in a relationship. So I didn't hook up with anybody else. And then I saw him like leaving court with his girl, his ex-girlfriend. And then the next day he called me and I was like, um, first of all, I'm glad you're going to jail like forever. <laughs> so he ended like, up going? He ended up going back to jail, but she like went to uh -huh. his court date and they were like, I was like, you were holding hands like outside of court. Like, and in my head, I was like, this is the craziest conversation I wonder anybody's if, ever had. If that girl was like, who the fuck gave you that cake? Exactly. Who, what bitch? Who gave you that smushed ass cake? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it literally was like a sand castle. <laughs> but I try. I thought I was like an amazing jail girlfriend. I would be one of those girlfriends too. Like I, you know, those crazy people, like there's shows about it where it's like these women like are pen pals with like, yeah, murderers. Like, murderers. Yeah, like Damien Echols, West yeah. Memphis 3. And yeah, like, and that's what I want to be. Well, it's like, hard because when you're like, women are strong and smart and forward yeah. thinking and intelligent and then you try to fuck a murderer. And then you're like, uh, but I he's like, you want to. Yeah. Shit, well, it's like my a, whole argument it's a challenge. challenge. <laughs> it's a challenge to, yeah. to not get murdered. You're like, I don't know if you will murder me or not. Right. Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah. Well, we always, like women always want to keep things interesting and that's just like another way to do that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like a mystery. You never know if he's going to kill you. Right. Exactly. You know? So much fun. You so much fun. Stays in jail. Right. So how did, did he uh, ever, was there ever a moment where he was like, uh, oh, I didn't know we were in a relationship. No, he was nice about it. He was like, because I, I think it was because of the cake. Like, he felt bad. So he was like, I'm sorry. Like, it was just like, she showed up. I'm like, nobody just shows up to go to, like, court. Like, yeah. nobody ever thing. wants to go to court. It's not like a fun thing. It's not yeah. like, oh, she showed up at, like, Disneyland. <laughs> like, yeah. it's court. Yeah. She didn't want to go. At the bar I you at. invited Ugh. her. Like, and I would have gone. Like, that's the thing. Like, I would have been there, like, in those With, like, pictures. A sign? Yeah. You would have had a sign I for him. I fully would have had a sign. Yeah, like, I go. Had my like, he's outfit. innocent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so stupid. The black and white stripes. <laughs> uh, LOL. Yeah. Let him go. <laughs> wow. Is that, like, the weirdest dating story you have? Like, the uh, worst? I have really bad dating stories. Okay. I've, like, been. I have some serious dating stories. Like what? That's not the worst one? I, that's pre That might be the worst. That's like the craziest one, I think. I'm trying to think of other bad ones. I went, I was on OkCupid, okay I had like a two-year stretch. Where Hot. I was just like, date, 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 date. Yeah, date. that's and like what I'm doing. It's terrible. Well, most of them were horrible, but as a comedian, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. this is hilarious. Yes. Yeah. And then this one guy showed up to my house. Um, he drove an ambulance and he like showed okay. up in the ambulance and like, outside and like put the sirens on and I was like oh, oh my god and then oh god, did he put you in a stretcher no <laughs> no no I wish that would have been did. cool well his partner was in the back of the ambulance right. so <laughs> he's hot, like oh hot. Bob needs to go home yeah but um <laughs> and then we had our first date and he had like dirty finger like long fingernails that were very dirty underneath nope. and then he ate he ordered this giant plate of wings and I thought we we're gonna split it but like he ate them all and no. I was like what the fuck I just sat there for like 40 minutes going you're not gonna eat this. You're eating this whole. Fucking so you didn't thing. even go in. No, you didn't no. even like tr like no, grab a wing. No, he was like like a monster, like a werewolf <gasps> to those wings. Yeah. And so that's anyway, disgusting. that's disgusting. Yeah, that's what comes to mind when I have like bad date experiences. Like, oh yeah, that was one of them. Yeah, I like went on a date with a guy recently. Like, and we had been talking forever. Um, but like he wasn't my boyfriend. I mean, he, to he me he was, yeah. but like he he like wasn't. Right. Um, but we went to the movies like. Literally, it's like this movie theater, like you're at a kiosk buying tickets. Yeah. Like, it's like you have to like wait in line and he like got one ticket for him. So I was what? like, okay, okay, okay. So I like <laughs> got my ticket. I was like, this is stupid. Like, It'd be funny if like your cart got declined. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I should have been like, oh, okay. It's, but I'm like cool about it. I'm like, I don't care. Like, but it was like a shitty movie that I didn't even want to see. I'm like, I didn't want to, like, I could have watched Netflix at my house. Like, yeah. what, what are we doing out in public together? So I bought the <laughs> ticket and then I got popcorn. Like, I got popcorn. He ate all the fucking popcorn. And I'm like, you have brought nothing to this, like, relationship not that you don't all. know exists. Like, this is a real relationship to me and not because you don't know that it's a thing. Uh but 
How could you just do like you eat all dick. my fucking popcorn? I would have popcorn. And popcorn's like the, my left. favorite thing. Me too. I love movie I'm a popcorn. popcorn addict. Yeah. I have my own popcorn popper <laughs> at my house. No. So my boyfriend gives me popcorn for Christmas and I'm genuinely happy oh about God, it. Oh my God, that's like, it's a great amazing. Gift. Yeah. yeah. So I feel you on that. That's <laughs> shit. shit. That's rude. Oh my God. What's I've, like the worst sex you've ever had? Because I feel like the worst sex these are I've just ever dates. had. <laughs> yeah, these are just what dates. The fuck this isn't even like people that? I'm okay with. Yeah. But wait, I'm confused because wait, so you're, do these people know that you're like somebody? How is it like dating when you're known? Yeah. I think it's this, I think it's, uh, it goes both ways. Cause mm -hmm. like either somebody's cool and like they don't, it's not a thing. Like mm -hmm. I never want it to be a thing and I never act like it's a thing. For like, sure. cause I don't think I'm like a superstar in any type of way, mm -hmm. but. I've dated, like, I also don't have, like, oh, I need to date a guy that has these things. Like, he, I don't think of it like that. But there's definitely been times where I've gone out with, like, I hooked up with, <laughs> all right. So, like, I dated this guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, he was, like, a waiter at one of the comedy clubs that I worked at. And I met yes. him, and I was like, you. And then he was, like, mozzarella sticks. And I was like, yes. <laughs> and so we fell in love, obviously. And... We dated for a little bit, but he like took such advantage of me. Like oh. I was paying for everything. Uh. And I'm like, and here's the thing. I'm like, okay, first of all, I'm, we're not doing anything crazy. We're like getting pizza. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not one of those people that's like, I need to go to all these bougie places. But then it was like, he never like offered. And then he was like going out getting tattoos and shit. Ugh, like, not, I'm like, like you just spent a thousand dollars on a tattoo, like, you and you can't pizza. get a bagel. Yeah. Oh, bagels are two dollars, <laughs> and I'm buying you a bagel. Like yeah. you're disgusting. <laughs> Yeah. Like you're gross, <laughs> and two dollars is like a high end bagel. That's yeah. like a nice bagel, it's like a buck thirty, exactly. Yeah. And I was like treating him to this like these fancy bagels. I would like be like, "What flavor do you want?" Like I was like nice. Wow, but shit, yeah, it Thankless. sucked. It sucked. Yeah, but I like hearing story. I always feel like I, I hear stories about male comedians fucking the waitresses, not going out yeah. and buying the bagels. I wish they were that nice. Right. Um, maybe some of them are. But I mean, it's nice to hear dream. like a chick comedian be like, yeah, you, let's yeah. get bagels. Oh. My friends always make fun of me because I like, whenever a guy like comes over, if I like hook up with a guy, I like get them an Uber. That's no, that's Which nice. Which is I've done so that. nice. I had a three-way in Toronto and I got the girl an Uber. That's so nice. I walked her downstairs and I waited it's with like her. It's like luxury. It's yeah. like, I'm not, it's like, I'm not even going to get you an Uber X. Like I'll get you like an Uber. Like I'll get you like the Honda Civic Uber. Yeah, like right. the fancy uber yes that's it's like yeah that's very derek jeter of that's you. so derek if jeter you got, like a little gift for yeah, you yeah, yeah. Yes. Gift basket. like he could just sit in that uber like he could plug in his phone like yes. there's so many things he could do and in there the uber in season one of girl code yes. Yes. <laughs> not even ride share that's very nice yeah that's what i'm saying i'm like but my friends always make fun of me for that because i'm like a monster but i'm also like get the fuck out of my apartment because i don't want to sleep in bed with anybody that i'm not dating yeah oh. i don't like it you yep. sweat you're like a furnace. Mm -hmm. Like your their leg is always like on my leg, and then I can't move my leg, I don't and know then what I am afraid to like sleep in my own bed. So I always I'm like, you need to go home. I actually a few weeks ago made a guy ride his bike back to Brooklyn <laughs> at three thirty in the morning, like over the Brooklyn Bridge in the rain. Wow. I, I mean, that's how much personal space matters, though. That, yeah. It's true. You can ride that bike. He shouldn't have rode a bike to me. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I would have gotten him an Uber. But yeah. there's no Ubers that are like, you could bring your bike in here. Like, that's fucking stupid. <laughs> Why Uber would you even be? A bike ride. Yeah, like Uber <laughs> bike. Like, no. That'll teach him to yeah. ever ride his bike and anywhere. And he assumed again. that he was going to be able to sleep over. And I was like, no, you're going to need to get on that get on that two wheeler and just ride your ass home, buddy. <laughs> What Sorry. is that though about guys always putting their leg? Because my boyfriend always puts his big ass leg on mine. I hate uh -huh. it. Is it like airing their dick out? Is that I what it is? I think here's what it is. And just do this. And I've been trying to figure this out forever because I <laughs> think that every girl is like fascinated by balls, right? Oh my God, I play with them. We don't all know the time. what the fuck is happening with mm -hmm. the balls. Yeah. Ever. And sometimes they shrink. They like shrink. And it's they like, are it was down. just a sack that was dragging. Yeah. And now it's like, where'd they go? Exactly. Sometimes what? I go to find them and they're not there. Yeah. Like, I'm like, where did they go? I'll go to hold them. I'm like, wait, there yeah. were just balls here. Yeah. Right. And balls now they're, it's like a squishy raisin. Me. 
Yeah. yeah. I Every excuse so that weird. I make for a guy, I'm like, it's his balls. Like, I know <laughs> it's the balls. Because I'm like, are they like, how do you not squish them? Like, when you're walking, like, how do you not feel them? Right. Like, bikes? These are like every boyfriend I've ever had. Bikes. I don't get it. How, how do, do you, you ride a bike? bike? Do you ride a bike? How the fuck how do you, you put you your balls on the side? You put you your place balls on your top, balls you go, on top of the bike. Nope. You teabag the bike. And you teabag then you the bike. Drive. Where okay. are you from? Ireland. Ireland. Okay. Riding bikes in Ireland. Those bikes. They they in those bikes. They in the front and they're like, we hope they do audience participation. Yeah, we, we hope they ask us what we do with our balls. Like Nailed we're riding it. a bike. <laughs> Yeah, um, but I'm like fascinated by them. But I think maybe that's why they're so spready when they sleep, because their balls are like they never. They probably don't even know what's going on with their balls think, ever. Because like, right. how could you even know? Do you know after like after a guy comes and then you just if you look at his balls, they're like moving. Like there's like it's a, so it's like, crazy. It's like Sigourney. It's like alien, but it's like balls. so crazy. I've never look. Oh my god. Oh my god. You it's, have to look. It's like um. You have to look. You know those things. They're like, like vibrating. No, it's they like. like you know those sand art pieces that like your dad had on his desk and you flip it over and it's all these colors and they just like go My like that. My dad didn't have it on his desk, but yes, My I dad know. Did. And yep. that's what balls do. It's like they like move. It's like the mummy. You know when the bugs go under your skin and they're like yes. moving around. That's what it's balls look so like. You have weird. a lot of weird life experiences too. It's, I'm obsessed believe- with ball. Like I love. Yeah. I'm like fascinated by them because I'm like I don't know what. They're e- like why? Why? Right. It's why the sperm are they house, there? But yeah, it's a, it is literally the like the beginning of a life, but it's still confusing to me. It's I don't just know. weird. Balls are so weird. That's my excuse for them, like with the legs when they're sleeping. It's like your balls, their balls are like just moving around. They're like, I have to just move my leg because right. my balls are creeping up on this me. This is again. their time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when yeah. they do that, do, are they naked? And so they're like, balls are on your butt. Yeah. I mean, and Ugh. I never, I never want to see, like, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. Unless I love you, right. I don't want to sleep in the same bed as you. I, it's yeah. not a thing that I... I I'm not like, oh, I want to wake up in the morning and so we both smell like shit and like <laughs> fucking kiss. It's so weird. Oh yeah. Ew. Yeah, if I'm going to kiss you with morning breath, it's because I fucking love you. Yeah, it's because I love you. you and I know that you love me and you're not going to like never talk to me again because I look like Jack Nicholson when I wake up in the morning. <laughs> like, wow. Wow, you do really good cool with makeup. Oh, yeah. Full Jack Holy. Nicholson. Amazing contour. Bang. I, there's just one dude that was like way older than me that I used to bang for like five years on and off. And I remember I would wake up before him and like go to his, I was like 20 or 19. Yeah. And I would put makeup on in the yeah. bathroom. And, Natural makeup. Yeah. 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 I I'm still like, do that. Like yeah. Pursed lips. And then as I was, I was like, what am I, why? Why am I doing this? Why yeah. am I? And then I would get back in bed and like put my hair and I'm like, Oh, good morning. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey. I love that fake waking up. I still <laughs> yeah. do that all the time. I'll be like, what? Like, that's not how I wake up. If anybody ever actually woke me up, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you touching me? Like, don't wake me up. How dare you? But I do that. Like, I'll, like, put Listerine in. Like, oh, he's yes. going to actually believe that I wake up smelling like a fucking mountain every morning. <laughs> so bizarre. Wow. You ever done that? Why do we do these things? Um, I've definitely brushed know. my teeth. But I've never That's put on makeup and gone back to bed. No. Uh, but yeah. I've brushed my teeth. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, there's a certain point when your breath is so bad that it's even hurting you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it hurts to swallow because you're like, no, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. You okay. open, you it's open like you're ashamed it. of it. You're ashamed of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, what's that, what's that scene in, like, is it my best friend's wedding where, like, Ju- or Notting Hill, maybe, where Julia Roberts, like, pulls the sheets over her mouth? And I was like, that's the scene in a movie that's most spoken Notting to me <laughs> out of any movie ever. Yeah. Covering. So just, I was like, well, if Julia Roberts wakes up with morning I breath, then it's her. okay for Sometimes everybody. Sometimes I'll wake up and, like, pretend to be confused. I'm like, where am I? Where yeah. Am I? I'm like, like, I never do this. Don't like, yeah, know. Even, know. even when, now, like, with my yeah. boyfriend of, like, five years. I'll so be like, where? And he's like, oh, it's okay. And he thinks it's so cute. So yeah. I just keep going. I'm like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Water? And, yeah. <laughs> like, no one else just me yeah. like, that's no I do that all the time I do that all but the time but even with like people that you like known a long time what it's even with people you've cute. known a long time yeah oh fully fully <laughs> I'll go all adorable on your ass yeah I'll go adorable and also sometimes hit like hit sleep hitting oh yeah. okay like oh I accidentally like I accidentally kicked you oh when they're snoring like get the fuck off me I accidentally kicked you oh, kind of thing but okay. it's like oh it was an accident and he's like oh it's so cute that you were sleeping and like physically abused me but right. I was like your leg was on me so I had to like <laughs> intervene and kick you 
Right. I yeah. kick right. Steven when he snores. Yeah. You Is should. Like, wait, uh, it's like a kicking. It's like, just stop. Him. Yeah. Snoring. Stop. How Every about, guy like, snores too. Nicely rolling over their body so they stop snoring. Tried it. Didn't it's, work? No. It I've doesn't done work. it. Only hitting works. Only hitting. Smack hitting, in the face or I, in the yeah. butt. Or kicking. <laughs> Have you ever actually like d- gotten violent with a dude? No. No. For sexual I don't reasons? Think, for sex no. You're not, not your you're thing. nonviolent person? I, I I don't think so. Even like when I get mad, I don't like I'm not like a screaming crazy person. I'm like the creepy mad person <laughs> where I just stare. Ooh. And like like my like, like my drool. jaw is clenched. Mm-hmm. <laughs> drool, yeah, I just stare and drool. Is she having a season <laughs> fucking pest? Me. Yeah. <laughs> but I just stare and like clench my jaw. And then like any guy I've ever been with is like, what the fuck are you thinking right now? Like, you need to talk to me. What's going on in your head? And I'm like, I'm fine. Right. Oh yeah. I'm the worst kind of crazy. Yeah. Because I'm like silent crazy. Nobody huh. knows what I'm thinking. How long mm. does it take you to eventually tell the person how you're feeling? Because I hold out for a while. Yeah, I sometimes. hold out until I calm down usually because that's what I've learned. Because I feel like if you say things when you're really mad, you end up saying things that you don't mean and it really can hurt someone's feelings. Even if <laughs> yep. you're like, hey, I was mad. Like, right. I didn't mean it. They're still like, you kind of did because you think it <laughs> yeah. and you said it. So it was on the tip of I your don't, tongue. <laughs> literally, you couldn't wait to say it. <laughs> like, like you interrupted me you interrupted to say it. Me. Yeah. <laughs> so they know that it's intentional and it, like you actually mean it. So I will always calm down before I yell at someone. But That's I don't really even yell. I just go, I just don't think that was right. Like I just like try and That's not good. be crazy. And it just comes off. It's hard. Complete insanity. Oh, yeah. It makes you me look even more crazy when I'm staring at a fucking wall. Like <laughs> it's weird. No, I don't look them in the eye. I stare at a wall and just gaze. <laughs> And they're like, I know you're mad. Like, That's why like are you mad? a dog seeing a ghost yeah. in the living room, but it's just totally. you mad yeah. and your boyfriend. <laughs> That's how I am when I'm mad. I was going to say, if you have to try so hard to not be crazy, do you think you're actually crazy? I, I'm a fully crazy. Yeah, oh, no. okay. What's yeah. your crazy? Because I, cra- I do that too. And yeah. I, I, it's mine is my temper when I'm, I had to learn to like argue appropriately yeah which i didn't know was like a thing yeah that's like you gotta learn that trial and error yeah like one time uh my boyfriend like was like i'm leaving i'm and i was like no you're not because i'm leaving and i like raced him to the <laughs> oh, front no. door and i like like pushed him aside like like a yeah like a really shitty like student athlete and i was like no yeah. i gotta go because i'm leaving yeah Very and then immature. you're both like i really didn't want to leave and like <laughs> I, I sat outside. Just, yeah, like, you sit outside. outside. That's what happens. Go. When you're like, I'm leaving, you're like, oh, fuck, where am I going to go? Dunkin' Donuts? Like, yeah. what do I do? Nothing is over. Who I want to leave my phone wins. Yeah, exactly. Whoever gets the apartment at the end wins. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's like, you, you get want to the chill. Yeah. yeah, and then when whenever I've left and then come home, like, stormed back in, I'm like, oh, you're just sitting here, like, living your life, having fun. Like, you forgot about the fight, and yeah, I was, yeah. like, in the rain, like, looking for something to do for five hours. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I'll go pretty far to prove a point. Yeah. I'll wait in the rain for a long yeah. time. Oh, I've done it. Oh, I've done, I've it. done yeah. Are What's you, the, like, a stalker? Because that's, like, my my crazy is not anger. It's stalking. Like, I waited outside a movie theater because no. I knew my ex-boyfriend was seeing a movie with his new girlfriend. <gasps> However, I thought it was in New York City and it was in New York State, and that's not the same place. Yeah. Uh, oh, so I was no. there for a while. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, why is it? Is it a double? Is he doing a double feature? What the fuck? Yeah, I, mean, I guess like, I'll stay here till three a.m. What are they at the matinee? Like, why <laughs> is this taking until one o'clock in the morning? Yeah, we, what were you gonna do? Yeah. Just were, look, you, she's just like, just kill them. Just look at them real hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> were you going to like, were you going to pull the move where you're like, I'm pretending I'm walking? Like, no, no, oh, no, wait, no, what? No, what? I was like, standing posed with my arms <laughs> crossed oh, the God. entire time because you got to be ready. You got to be ready. You got to be true. ready. It's true. You do. You do. I think that that's really funny. I would. I wish that they were at that movie theater in the city, not in the state. Um, but I would love to know what you would, like. What actually would have happened? That would have been really funny because it's like one of those things that you anticipate. You're like, I'm gonna stand with my arms crossed and look at him. Right. And then he would probably just come out of the movies, be like, Hey, what's going on, girl? Like, just like keep walking. And you're like, like ah! you're like, I showed him. Like, he like saw me. You know. Well, that's something that's like that's 
that's never going like that's always going to make you worse than any fear you're striking. <laughs> right, into right, their right, hearts. right, right. Like that's always like just making me look like yeah. the worst person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's freaky. What's the weird, the like the worst thing you've ever done? The worst thing I've ever of, like, done, like stalkery or like. Can't I'm trying go. to think of stalking because I feel like I'm definitely. I mean, there's definitely been times where I'm like. I've seen every Instagram picture a guy has ever posted. Mm. Have you ever accidentally Since the liked beginning his of, oldest one? Yes. Like, fuck, 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 That's gonna, what I was getting at. Like, but then yeah. he's going to know that it was liked. The feeling you get when you accidentally like somebody's Instagram picture that's from like Horrible. 375 weeks ago, you're like, you're like, I, I you want to fucking die like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, but like i did that once and i texted a guy hey somebody hacked my instagram oh. <laughs> which made it even worse because it's like who would hack your instagram and go back <laughs> seven years on my page and like a picture like and like, and it's like a, it was like a picture of us like back in the day oh. it's like a, like the first picture we ever took together down memory wow. lane wow was a lot of scrolling like, it was wow. like my thumb hurt like yeah. i was scrolling so I've much <laughs> so i definitely did that i think that that's what it is the internet is so fucking creepy like you creep like i'm like i know how you broke your arm like yeah. in third grade like i don't even like i know everything it about you it encourages you to be a private investigator but yes. you are not and it's, it gives you information you don't need to know <laughs> i should be though every girl i mean is so good at i it. could i could be in the fbi yeah. Have you ever snooped through it? Do you snoop? Oh, I would snoop. Oh, I snoop Which if is bad. I have a reason to snoop. Yeah. I'm not like an all the time snooper, but like if someone's <laughs> being shady, I'm like, I'm going to investigate and What's I'm going to get to the bottom of this. example of shade? Um, example of shade. Um, okay. So I dated a guy. He was like away for a weekend mm-hmm. and shady. he was in Atlantic shady. city. Shady. Oh, shade. In Atlantic city. Who the fuck goes there? So exactly. <laughs> and what do you go there for? Like, I'm Whores, not stupid. I'm so and pussy. I'm like, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Gambling. Like, I'm like, you're crazy. Ugh. So he went away and he like. He was like, I was like texting him and he didn't answer me. We were dating for like eight months at this point. But did he, he like know? didn't answer me. He knew no, you were dating? We, we were like in, we were living together. Oh, like this is a real, this is an actual relationship that I actually had. <laughs> like this is a real person that knew that he was my boyfriend. <laughs> like fully like living under the same room. Consensual boyfriend. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, he knew, he knew. Yeah, he definitely knew. But... <laughs> <laughs> He went away and I was like texting him. He didn't answer me. Like he wasn't answering me. And then the next day he texted me, hey, um, I just got ice cream with my friends last night and then went to sleep. And I'm like, you fucked oh. a hooker. Like that's definitely what happened. <laughs> like you fully fucked a hooker. Like I mean, nobody that... gets ice cream in Atlantic City. Like they don't even and sell ice cream talk. in Atlantic City. Like, no, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like you're so busy eating ice cream until you fell asleep, like eating ice cream. That's such an adorably shitty it's excuse. such a bad and that's what i been like i'm like first of all if you're gonna cheat like put fucking thought into it yeah. like give me a real excuse like i got robbed i'd be like what oh my god who <laughs> robbed you like i'm gonna go visit him in jail yeah. like i would, like get so excited but <laughs> <Good callback. laughs> it's like a full circle like everything's happening for me but <laughs> to, like get a better excuse and he didn't give a good excuse, so I was like, I'm looking through this his phone. I need to look through his phone. And I looked through his phone and was he, he in the shower hooked up with somebody. A shit? How would it, there's he, always that moment where you're like, you wanna know what happened? The phone yes. and me. It's just the phone and me. Yeah. Oh God, when you're looking at it, you're like, oh, I yeah. shouldn't. I shouldn't. Oh, it's like a fucking yeah. salvating. Fu- it's like you're starving in a desert, and but it's like a Thanksgiving asking dinner. for it. But I don't feel oh, yeah. this. I never feel this. You've never snooped. No. Oh my god, I'm Snoop that's, Dogg. That's I'm good. Snoop Dogg. <laughs> fully Snoop Dogg. <laughs> because I just know that I have such a poor outlook on life that I know I'm going to find like what that's I what it is. Finding is worse than what I would ever find, so I never. You look. don't know that for sure, though. A that lot of times, what you find is crazy. All. A lot of times what you find is crazy. Like, I've been like, I'm not even going to find anything. Like, i have like... Ninja porn? Yeah. What? I'm like, what's happening here? <laughs> um, but I was mad. And then, so here's here's how I found out. So he, like, the next day, perfect timing. He, <laughs> like, had gotten home. Like, the next day that he had gotten home, he got a new phone. And he forgot that his old fucking phone was in the apartment. And oh, I was shit, like, party. Fuck. 
So he left again. He was always leaving, by the way. Like, I love that he was, like, in this story, like, he's constantly leaving. Like, he left again. And I was like, the phone's on the counter. He said he went for ice cream. Oh, he needs make sure. to get tested. Like, something happened when he was getting ice cream. Yeah. And, yeah, and I went through his phone, and I found out that he cheated on me while he was getting mm -hmm. ice cream. So th it's like There was no ice cream. No, there was no well, ice there cream. Might have been, that out, yeah. but it might have, yeah, none. I, I've snooped. <laughs> would it been, would have been better if he would cheated, but they went to get ice cream together? Yeah, because they it's fought. like it's ice cream. Why are you yeah. lying about that? <laughs> yeah. Like who, like what? Me? That's like a five year old lie. lie. Yeah, that's like a five year old kid would be like, I got ice cream, and then I came home from school. It's like, yeah, you're a fucking idiot. Mm. I the one boyfriend that I snooped on, I it was because I knew he was cheating on me, and then I and yeah. then he was, yeah. and then like the girl ended up coming over to my apartment, and he lived two floors above me. That's how I met him. Like, don't say the guy in your oh building. Oh my god, that's like friends. And then um, he like <laughs> right? passed out drunk, and then the girl and I like went upstairs <gasps> and be like, and he woke up out of a. I want to. He told me he would do the podcast because he just moved back to New York, and I was like, please, because I want to know what he was thinking in that moment where he fell asleep drunk, thought I was next to him, and me and this chick show oh up. Oh my like, god! What the fuck? And he was like, Wow! He screamed so loud. That's so badass. It was so satisfying, but also like really hurt my heart. Yeah, I mean that's so. crushing. That's soul crushing. But like, I'm glad I snoop, but snooping yeah. is not good. Snooping well, isn't good, and, but if you give me a reason to snoop, I'm gonna fucking do it. Yeah. I'm gonna do it. Just be honest with me. If you're honest with me, like don't, if I catch you in a lie, I'm like, I'm gonna fucking go through all your shit. Yeah. Because you're asking for it. Don't tell, like, yeah. it's crazy. Don't tell me you're going to get ice cream. Don't tell me you're going to get ice cream in Atlantic City. You. Like, you're in Atlantic City. That's so crazy. Was he actually in Atlantic City? He was in Atlantic City. Oh, who good. lives in Atlantic City? That's what I'm Or was saying. it another girl who was also she visiting? She was also in Atlantic oh, okay. City. Okay, thank you. Oh, that okay. was coordinated. Yeah. Okay. Did it feel, like, kind of good to be like, I was fucking right. Oh, it felt so good. Heartache. But yeah. I did the shit where, like, this is what girls do. Like, when they know, like, I knew that he had cheated at that point. So I called him, right? And <laughs> I was like, phone. On, on his new phone, when I had his old from phone his in my hand, phone. from his old phone, like, Dance it's about to go down. Um, but I called him and I go, is there anything you want to tell me? Oh, which is that, like no one every guy, when any guy hears that, he's like, I'm just going to drop dead right here. Cause <laughs> there's nothing like no matter what she knows something, but I can't admit to it because then I'm going to end up admitting to some shit that she didn't know yet. So it's like, <laughs> right. they get all wacky. So I was like, Gee, do, is there anything you want to tell me? He's like, no, 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 no. And I'm like, <laughs> I was like, I'll forgive you if you just tell me. Like, oh, that's, a I, that's a lie. That's a lie. Full blown that's lie. lie. Full blown lie. But I mean, yeah, it was a full lie. It was you fully a lie. You, cheating, I don't think, can, is the end all be all relationship depending on the circumstances. But yeah, I mean, know. if someone told me they were going to get ice cream I and know, they were, it's you're their, asking to get caught. I'm breaking yeah. up with you because you you're a shitty yeah, liar. You might as well have just told me you hooked up with someone. I would have rather him told me he hooked up with somebody than be like, I got ice cream. Yeah. yeah. And fell asleep. Yeah. Like, you're gross. <sighs> yeah. So I was like, do you want to tell me anything? He said, no. I was like, I'll forgive you. And then he was like, <laughs> You gave him a He was out. like, you, but he said, he was like, you won't forgive me. And I was like, wow. true. And then he ended up still denying it. And I was like, I know this, I know this, I know this, I know this. But he still to this day doesn't know how I caught him cheating. And he Does thought it? that I hired a private investigator <laughs> and like still thinks that. Really? He still fully thinks that I hired a private investigator. I had no money. Like, the how am I going to hire a private? Guy. Yeah. A private investigator? How dare you? Well, I'm so smart. There's no other way she could have found out. That's very narcissistic of That's him. That's insane, right? Yeah. yeah. Dickhead. What a dick. I'm like, you're dick. so stupid. You left your phone. I still have his phone. Are you serious? <laughs> I still have his phone. It's like can 10 years <laughs> later. It's in my nightstand if you guys want it. Like, you can go through it. I don't care. <laughs> Why do you keep it? Because I don't want to throw it away because I feel like, oh, wait, it's not my phone. It doesn't fucking matter. I always am afraid getting rid of a phone because I'm like, somebody's oh. going to find it and like find like credit card shit. Right. But it's not my phone. So I should. Did I you just, just realize I should that just right give now? it to a homeless person. <laughs> yeah. I was like, don't eat it. Yeah. I mean, clear it. Clear Like wipe it. I'll take a screenshot nah. of that text. So you have like a good mem, but like then wipe it. Yeah. And then give it to a homeless person. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. Give them a charger though too. Cause but it's an old, this was a long time ago. So it's like an old phone. Oh. Well, they're homeless. So. But Star do they have it? Yeah, but if you're homeless, do you have an outlet to like plug a phone in? Yeah. Starbucks. 
True. Starbucks. Homeless people can go to Starbucks, yeah, go to Starbucks during Starbucks. the day. Homeless people fuck with Starbucks. Hard body. Yeah. Like, it's a real In thing. New York City? Yes, I'd they do. I'd rather have an old phone than no phone. Yeah. Same. I'm going to do it, you guys. I don't know why I, like, didn't realize that it wasn't my phone. Well, I thought you were, like, just holding <laughs> on to for, it. I don't for, know. For, like, 10 like, years. I had no idea that it wasn't my phone. To, like, remind you. <laughs> I'm so glad. Of, like, all the mistakes of, you've made. No, I was going to say to remind you that your instincts are right. Yeah. But whatever. Trust your instincts. It's, like, framed. It's, like, don't forget that time you were right, girl. You get okay. a shadow box frame for yeah. it. Oh, yeah. my God. That's a really Memories. good Memories. Oh, my God. I'm doing that. I'm not giving it to a homeless person. <laughs> that's cool. That's a nice piece yeah. of yeah. <laughs> well, we're we're I think we're we've done an hour, right? Person has it been an hour, you it's guys? Nine oh seven. I haven't I haven't I'm seen it. Sure everyone di- everyone died and is yeah. being fingered in the back. So, did um, that guy ever give? Did you ever find that guy's number or nah? No. <gasps> okay, I just want to make sure. So make sure you know yeah, it's probably saved. Call. By the way, I'm a stalker, so I know this. It's probably saved on your Apple ID. So if you type in his name, it's still gonna come up. Holy in shit, phone. Carly! That is probably true. It's a hundred percent true. We just see the whole audience take out their phones in unison. It's true. If you delete someone, because I do that all the time, I'm like, I hate him. I'm deleting him, yeah, and then the do. next day, I'm like, I feel bad that I deleted him, and then he's still there. Oh, okay. He's still there. <laughs> She's like, she just doesn't want to give him in your or phone. Do, you, no, there, there's. His email, His email address, I'll, we'll email oh, him. Yeah, give it to me after the show. We're going to send a real nasty email. email. It makes for great podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to read it next week. Too. We're going to wait until tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Because willpower. Yeah. Um, where can we find you online? I feel like a lot of people already know this, but like, what's your Twitter handle yeah. and shit? Do you have my anything you Twitter, want to promote? My Twitter. Oh, wait. I'm actually here tomorrow with Annie Letterman and Jamie Lee, if you yes. guys want to come. It's at 9.30. Um, but all of my stuff is Carly Aquilino. I know my last name's fucking annoying because there's a Q in it. It's A Q U I L I N O. But that's like Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, all that shit. Hell yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank right. you so much, guys. Thank, thank you. you so Give much. Give her a round of applause. Thank Give it up, you. Carly. You can You didn't show up, knew what you were doing, probably throw up I feel ashamed now, fuck it, I feel ashamed now. After all you put me through, I would always defend you I feel ashamed now, fuck it, I feel ashamed now. Friends would tell me you're no good, or I'd believe it if I could trust I feel ashamed now, fuck it, I feel ashamed now. I understand if you step back, but not into someone's lap Turn the page on you now because I am grown You should've known, you should've known Not the type you can game and get